Cornelius was the top ranker in the Mountain Gate examination, outdoing even Josh of the Matthews clan. Xavier had met him once during the gathering of their elite division class before abruptly being taken away by Joel. Previously, he'd only known Cornelius to be the direct disciple of a Grand Elder from the Master Teacher Pavilion headquarters, but during the journey to obtain the Donga Gourd, he learned from Patrick and the others that he was the real Master K's direct disciple. In other words, the real counterpart to the fake persona he had come up with. And for the other party to have waited for him there for several days. It couldn't be that the other party had found out about him faking his identity and came over there to apprehend him. Did he mention the reason why he's looking for me? Xavier asked anxiously. It would still be fine if it was just Cornelius, but if Master K were to find out as well, he would have no choice but to flee. As the most enigmatic and strongest elder of the Master Teacher Pavilion headquarters, there was little doubt that Master K had already achieved a level far beyond Saint Level 9. There was no way he would be able to stand against a figure like that. Well, he didn't say anything at all, but he's oddly patient. Despite being well aware that you weren't around, he still refused to leave, insistently waiting here for a few days straight. Roach said with a deep frown. Xavier's lips twitched upon hearing those words. That's an attempt to corner me. There had been completely no interaction between him and Cornelius in the past, so other than the matter of him being Master K's direct disciple, he couldn't think of another reason why the latter would willingly wait there for a few days straight. Roach suddenly recalled another matter and said, Right, Nathaniel is here as well. Uh, just like Cornelius, he's been waiting for you for quite a few days now, too. Nathaniel? What's he doing here? Is he acquainted with Cornelius? Xavier was slightly taken aback. Considering how Nathaniel was a student of the Ordinary Division, barely meeting the mark to qualify as a student of the Sanctum of Sages, it didn't seem too likely for him to be acquainted with the number one expert of their Elite Division class. Noticing a hint of dilemma on Xavier's forehead, Roach proposed, Young master, are you intending to meet them? Otherwise, I can just relay a message to them that you are currently in seclusion. It's fine. I'll meet them, Xavier replied. What would come would eventually come. There was no point evading the matter. He might as well meet the other party to see what he was intending to do. Besides, considering how the Shrine of Seers and Spirit Awakener Hall were reduced to rubble, the other party should have already received the news of his return by now. There was no way he could continue hiding from the other party anymore. Having made up his mind, he didn't hesitate to make his way over to the main hall of his residence. Walking in, he saw two young men seated patiently on the guest seats. One of them stood up in agitation upon seeing him and exclaimed, Ah, Master Xavier, you're finally back! I believe you should be familiar with Senior Cornelius over here, too. I didn't expect that he's Master K's direct disciple as well, coming from the same roots as you, so I specially brought him over here to meet with you. Naturally, the young man who had stood up was Nathaniel. Master K's direct disciple? Xavier asked as he directed a long, meaningful look at Nathaniel. If thoughts could kill, Nathaniel might have died a thousand times over in that short moment. All this while he had been wondering who the culprit was that revealed the news of him being Master K's student, but who could have thought that it would be an inside leak? Nathaniel had been in Sintran City during the same time as him, and he was rather close with Master Alistar and the others too. All it would take was a simple ask for him to find out Xavier's lineage. So, it wasn't too surprising for him to know about his relationship with Master K. But it's one thing for you to know, but why did you have to boast about it in front of Cornelius? Xavier thought. If this news were to get to the ears of the real Master K, won't I be a goner? Xavier rubbed between his eyebrows in frustration. Rage bubbled furiously within him, but there was no outlet for him to vent it all. In the end, he could only suppress his overflowing fury and chuckle awkwardly. You're, uh, from Master K's lineage, too? Cornelius stood up, 
and instead of answering the question, he raised his palm and gestured to the center of the hall. I would like to request to have a duel with you. A duel? Xavier asked with a deep frown. That's right. Not bothering to explain his intentions, Cornelius drove his gleam and an intense aura rippled forth from him, threatening to crush the surrounding air into fragments. This is phantasmal space realm primary stage. Xavier widened his eyes in astonishment. The previous time he met Cornelius, the latter was only at the Grand Dominion Realm advanced stage. Yet in just a short 20 days or so, he managed to raise his cultivation by two stages, reaching the phantasmal space realm primary stage. This was truly fearsome. While the bottleneck that one had to overcome to achieve a breakthrough to Saint Level 7 Phantasmal Space Realm was significantly lower as compared to that of the Saint Level 8 Dimension Sundering Realm, it was still inconceivable for any cultivator to do so within a short span of 20 days. What was even more astounding was that the other party was only in his mid-twenties, roughly 24 or 25 this year. With such talent, it was just a matter of time before he became one of the powerhouses of the Master Teacher continent. Noticing Xavier's hesitation, Cornelius chuckled coldly and said, I did manage to make some advancements during this time, but it seems like you've achieved quite a few breakthroughs yourself, too. The previous time we met, you were only at the Leaving Aperture Realm primary stage, but in just a short twenty days, you already managed to reach the Leaving Aperture Realm pinnacle. You were able to defeat Gavin and the others as a Leaving Aperture Realm primary stage cultivator, so you should be far stronger now, right? You didn't hesitate to challenge those of the Matthews clan, so why would you hesitate at the notion of fighting against me? While Xavier was astounded by the rate at which Cornelius was advancing his cultivation, the vice versa was true as well. Cornelius remembered that Xavier was only at the primordial spirit realm pinnacle when he challenged the mountain gate examination, but in less than a month, his cultivation had risen by an entire realm reaching the Leaving Aperture Realm pinnacle. This rate of cultivation was one which even he would pale far in comparison against. Furthermore, the other party also wielded superior fighting prowess that allowed him to challenge cultivators far beyond his tier, as shown by how he managed to defeat Gavin and the others back then. In truth, Cornelius's initial intention was to confront Xavier on the rumors of him being Master K's direct disciple too. But upon recalling the peculiarities surrounding the latter, his blood suddenly raced in excitement, and an urge to challenge the latter to a battle struck him. Since you're earnest in your request, it would be impolite for me to turn you down. Knowing that there was no way to shun the matter, Xavier walked to the center of the room and gestured. Feel free. As long as Master K didn't appear in the picture, there was nothing for him to fear. A blade was already above his neck, regardless of whether he pushed ahead or retreated. Since that was the case, he might as well retaliate. If Cornelius wanted to make a move on him, he would first have to defeat him. Seeing that Xavier had accepted his challenge, Cornelius stepped forward as well and flicked his hand softly. A dominion swiftly engulfed the main hall. Any spiritual perception that attempted to perceive within the barrier would abruptly vanish as if falling into another dimension. At the same time, Cornelius also pushed his palm downward and an oppressive might froze the surrounding space, leaving one feeling like they were standing amid a vacuum, making even breathing impossible. Xavier narrowed his eyes. He is indeed rather strong. Even though Cornelius was only at the Phantasmal Space Realm primary stage, the strength he had displayed so far was already on par with the Phantasmal Space Realm advanced stage Blair. True, Blair was still slightly lacking as compared to Joel and the others, but with her caliber, she could already be considered one of the top geniuses of the Sanctum of Sages, far surpassing most of the other students. And yet, to wield strength comparable to her despite being two cultivation stages weaker, Cornelius was truly a frightening individual. A feeling of tightness swiftly constricted Xavier's chest. He knew that he would only be plunged into a worse position if he were to retreat at this point, so he roared furiously, Break! 
His voice seemed to be tinged with a powerful force that hammered down on one soul like a wrecking ball. In just an instant, cracks swiftly spread across the Dominion before it shattered with a resounding explosion. Through studying the books Blair had relating to demonic tunes, he managed to raise his comprehension and mastery of demonic tunes to the caliber of an eight-star demonic tunist. He was still unable to exert the full prowess of an eight-star demonic tunist due to the limitations of his cultivation, but his attacks were still plenty fearsome. Without a transcendental state of mind, it would be impossible to withstand it. After breaking the dominion with a roar, Xavier flicked his finger and sent a surge of sword energy in Cornelius' direction. Considering that his cultivation was far beneath the other party, it would be extremely dangerous for him to hold back. Thus, he infused the full prowess of his offensive sword quintessence into the attack. Amid its trajectory, the surge of sword energy suddenly burst open to engulf the entire area, creating something reminiscent of the sea. It wasn't the sea-severing sword of the Three Swords of Salvatore, but the combined prowess of the countless sword energies within this sea was plenty terrifying. They converged like a vortex and crushed down Cornelius with devastating might. Formidable. Cornelius's eyes lit up upon seeing this move. Under normal circumstances, it should be impossible for any cultivator beneath Saint Level 7 to withstand the dominion of a phantasmal space realm cultivator. Yet, with just a roar, he was able to sever my control over my dominion before creating his own dominion using his sword energy to suppress me. The reason why Grand Dominion Realm experts were so powerful was because they commanded absolute authority within the territory of their dominion. Considering that the other party was only at leaving Aperture Realm Pinnacle, having yet to comprehend Dominion, the other party would inevitably be at a disadvantageous position facing him head on. Given that, the other party chose to craft his own Dominion using his sword energy to accrue sufficient power to fight on equal ground with him. This was something he had never thought of before. It was truly a brilliant move. <laughs> As soon as the other party's sword energy collided with his palm, Cornelius was forced to retreat two steps. On the other hand, Xavier was forced to retreat eight steps. In this short encounter, it was apparent who wielded the absolute advantage in terms of sheer strength. Someone who's two cultivation realms weaker than me to be able to withstand my attack. I must admit that you're indeed a person of great capability. However, let's see if you'll be able to do the same for this, too. With eyes gleaming in excitement, Cornelius charged forward once more. His silhouette swiftly turned illusory as if he had warped into a phantasm. In just the blink of an eye, he had already covered 30 feet to stand right before Xavier. Xavier was alarmed. Its speed is incredible, too. In terms of instantaneous bursts of speed, the other party was no slower than his Heaven's Path movement art. The reason why Joel was capable of moving faster than him was due to his high cultivation realm and superior grasp of spatial laws. But to think that Cornelius would be so fast as well. As expected of Master K's true direct disciple, a genius from the Master Teacher Pavilion headquarters, his abilities were truly off the charts. From the previous encounter, it was apparent that it would be unwise for Xavier to face Cornelius's attacks head on, considering the disparity in their strength. Thus, in response to the latter's sudden approach, he quickly activated his Heaven's Path movement art to retreat. But as fast as he retreated, Cornelius' advancement was even faster. The latter's outstretched finger seemed to be ready to pierce a hole in his throat at any moment. Xavier quickly switched between various movement arts in hopes of shaking Cornelius off, but as if his shadow, the latter remained tight on his tail. Slowly, he began to panic a little. At this rate, I just might lose. Even though Xavier was still able to keep the other party's finger off his throat for the time being, he would risk losing control over the momentum of the battle at this rate. Once that was to happen, it would only be a matter of time before he lost. I'll just have to take a risk. Taking a deep breath, Xavier made up his mind and his eyes turned solemn. He abruptly halted his footsteps as he forcefully compressed the muscles of his neck. As a result of his sudden stop, Cornelius's finger struck Xavier's neck. However, the anticipated piercing didn't occur. On the contrary, 
a sound reminiscent of the metallic reverberation of two weapons clashing with one another sounded instead. Heaven's Path Golden Body. After learning the newest version of the Heaven's Path Golden Body compiled from Patrick's physical body cultivation technique manuals, the resilience of his physical body had become comparable to half-Saint High-Tier artifacts. To put it in other words, as long as Cornelius didn't wield a Saint High-Tier weapon in his hands, it would be nearly impossible for him to impale him. It should be my turn now. Cornelius was visibly stunned by the failure of his finger to impale Xavier's throat. Knowing that this was a good opportunity for him to strike, Xavier clenched his fist tightly and thrust it forward. This punch harnessed not only the strength derived from his gleam, but from his physical body and soul as well. Even before landing on its target, the other party's phantasmal space realm dominion had already begun shattering inch after inch, reminiscent of a popped bubble. You, how is this possible? Cornelius was aghast. It was one thing for a leaving Aperture Realm pinnacle cultivator to be able to call forth strength that was on par with a phantasmal space realm primary stage expert like him, but more importantly than that, the timing and positioning of the other party's fist was indescribably ingenious. It was timed right in the lapse between the dissipation of his previous surge of might and the regathering of his strength. In other words, the other party had managed to see through the flaws in his fighting style despite only having exchanged a single blow. One must know that the cultivation and battle techniques he practiced were no weaker than the top-notch techniques that the core members of the Matthews clan and Natalie clan practiced. It would be impossible for even Felix to see through such profound battle techniques and cultivation techniques in such a short period. And yet, the young man before him was already able to find their flaws and exploit them. But if you think that you can defeat me just like that, you're being far too optimistic. Cornelius' shock only remained for less than a tenth of a breath before a sharp glint surfaced in his eyes. He tilted his body slightly sideways to bring forth sufficient power to return a fist of his own toward Xavier. His fist was directed straight toward the other party's chest, and the latter's punch was directed toward his chest too. He was aiming for a direct showdown. Let's see how formidable your defense is. A hint of callousness flashed across Xavier's eyes when he saw Cornelius' response. Without even bothering to even change his position, he drove the Heaven's Path golden body, and a slight golden shimmer flowed across the surface of his body. Xavier's fist smashed into the other party's chest, and in that instant he felt as if he was punching a boulder. A numbing sensation swiftly crawled from his fingers up his arm. At the same time, Cornelius' fist also smashed into his body, and a stifled feeling welled up in his chest, forcing him to retreat several steps. Oh, oh, your physical body! Xavier was astonished. It was due to cultivating the Heaven's Path Golden Body that the resilience of his physical body was on par with half Saint High Tier Artifact. But to his astonishment, the resilience of the other party's physical body was actually on par with his. Even though it seemed like their confrontation had ended in a draw, the truth was that he had lost out a little due to his limited cultivation. <laughs> Wonderful! Cornelius roared in laughter. Even in a clash of brute strength, the young man before him was able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. He flexed his arms a little, and as if someone had blown air into his muscles, his body began bulging out, filling his loose robe. It seemed as if he had just eaten some kind of incredible tonic that transformed his slender body into that of a bulked-up, brawny man in an instant. Taking a step forward, Xavier immediately felt immense pressure weighing down on him. In just a short instant, Cornelius's aura and strength had increased twofold. What kind of secret art is that? Xavier clenched his fist tightly in astonishment. In his past year of journey through the Master Teacher Continent, he had seen plenty of secret arts that gave one an explosive boost of strength. But he had never seen one that allowed an individual to enhance their muscle mass without any side effects at all. However, he knew he didn't have the luxury of allowing his thoughts to wander in this moment either. 
Driving his heaven's path golden body to its limits, he sent another punch over. In just the blink of an eye, the two of them had already traded more than ten blows. A deafening gale raged within the hall, threatening to tear the entire building down. At this point, Roach and Nathaniel had already backed out of the hall. Nevertheless, even the lingering air current that escaped from the hall was sufficient to leave them with a stinging sensation all over their bodies, as if a fearsome inferno was blazing on them. It wasn't too long ago that my strength was still on par with Master Xavier, but in just a few months such a huge gap has been pulled between us. Nathaniel was shocked. He could still clearly remember the days back in Sintran City when they were still an equal match for one another, and there was hardly any disparity in their strength at all. It was in remembrance of those days that he had worked exceptionally hard during this period, hoping that he would be able to catch up with the other party. Yet, who could have thought that despite all the effort he had put in, the gap between them would only grow larger? With the other party's current strength, even a punch from afar was sufficient to smash him into a lump of meat. The difference between the both of them was already immeasurable at this point. At this point, Cornelius suddenly flicked his wrist and drew a sword. He slashed it lightly in the air, and the air in the room seemed to flow naturally along with the movements of his sword. Why don't we move on to a weaponry battle instead? Sure, why not? Xavier casually tapped his finger forward, and in the next moment, more than a hundred swords suddenly materialized, floating around him. What are you doing? Cornelius narrowed his eyes in astonishment, but before he could finish his words, what could only be described as an entire sea of sword energy suddenly crashed down on him. He was immediately sent flying by the immense force, and his back crashed right through a wall of the residence. An instant later, the wall was reduced to dust under the furious assault of the sword energy. Cornelius flew back roughly 3,200 feet before the force pushing him back finally alleviated enough for him to regain his balance. At this point, his face was completely pale and his hands were shaking. The web in between his thumb and forefinger felt as if it would tear apart at any moment. He had to take quite a few huge mouthfuls of air before he finally managed to catch a breather and calm down his billowing gleam. He turned his gaze toward Xavier with a look of disbelief and said, Ew, just what kind of move is that? He was a Saint Level 7 Phantasmal Space Realm primary stage expert, whereas the other party was merely a Saint Level 5 pinnacle expert. Yet, despite their vast disparity in cultivation, the other party was still able to render him helpless with just this single move. Just what kind of technique was it for it to be so formidable? It's the old sword maestro sea severing sword, Xavier replied calmly. There was no reason for him to hide this matter. Considering how famous the old sword maestro was, as long as Cornelius were to do some digging up, he should be able to uncover this easily. Impossible, Cornelius immediately exclaimed. Putting aside the sea-severing sword, not even the heaven desecration sword wields that much strength. The Master Teacher Pavilion Headquarters possessed a vast collection of battle technique manuals from all over the continent. While the old sword maestros Three Swords of Salvatore wasn't passed down, there was still some brief information regarding it in the library. Through analyzing the old sword maestros history and sword style, it wasn't too difficult for those who had comprehended an offensive-type sword quintessence to make a rough deduction of the prowess of the Three Swords of Salvatore. Putting aside the sea-severing sword, not even the strongest sword art of the Three Swords of Salvatore, the Heaven Desecration Sword, was able to command such explosive power. It's true that the old sword maestro's original sword art didn't wield such power. However, I made some modifications to it, Xavier explained. To be fair, the old sword maestro's version of the sea-severing sword wasn't weak but without a doubt, it paled far in comparison to the current version of it he was using. The main reason why his sea severing sword was so powerful, allowing him to even send Clyde flying back then, was because he had managed to resolve the hulking number of flaws it was plagued with, thus forming a perfect Heaven's Path sword art. You made some modifications to it? Cornelius widened his eyes in utter shock. He could believe it if it was his teacher who had modified the old sword maestro's sword art to such an extent, 
but the young man before him was only a leaving aperture realm pinnacle cultivator. Was it possible for him to alter the sea severing sword to this level? Indeed, without altering it, how could I possibly send you flying with just a third of its strength? Xavier explained with a smile. A third of its strength? Cornelius's cheeks twitched upon hearing those words. He had to use his strongest means just to fend against the sword art the other party had executed earlier, but even so, he was still sent flying over half a mile away. He thought that this was already quite extreme, but this turned out to just be a third of its strength. Cornelius turned to Xavier and said, Considering the imposing might that your sword art harnesses, there's no way it could only be a third of its original strength. Considering what a close match they were earlier, how could the other party possibly suppress him using just a third of his strength after wielding a sword? Could this be psychological warfare from the other party to crush his confidence? Ugh, how embarrassing. Uh, I didn't think that you'd be able to see through it. Well, uh, I'm quite a humble person, so I thought that it wouldn't be good for me to brag too much, but... Since you've seen through my lie, I guess it would be rude for me to continue deceiving you. I only used a sixth of my true strength in the earlier attack. Xavier scratched his head as he revealed awkwardly. After all, Cornelius was Master K's direct disciple, so he had made sure to hold back a little while making his move. Thus, he only used a sixth of his original strength in the earlier attack. He was hoping not to shatter the other party's confidence by being a little humbler, but he ended up being exposed instead. Since that was the case, as embarrassing as it was, he could only admit to it. On the other hand, upon hearing those words, Cornelius nearly fainted. What he meant was that the other party had used his full strength, but attempted to pass it off as just a third of his full prowess to strike a blow to his morale. But who could have thought that the other party would claim that the inaccuracy was a result of his humility instead. Since that's the case, I want you to launch an attack of full might against me. I want to see just how powerful that sword art of yours is in its most powerful form. Cornelius harumphed with gritted teeth. He didn't believe that it was possible for the young man before him to be so powerful. You want me to launch an attack of full might against you? Xavier frowned. I'm afraid that a lapse in control might result in your death instead. Part of the reason he didn't dare use his full strength was that the other party was Master K's actual direct disciple. But more importantly than that, if he were to devote his full strength to executing the Sea Severing Sword, he would have to expend all of his gleam before the sword arc could be stopped. It was one thing when his gleam capacity was still lower, but after the alteration he had made to his aura through the Dongagord, the amount of gleam he had in his aura rose to fivefold what it previously had. If he were to lose control of the sword art once more, a huge problem could very well occur. Lose control! Hearing those words, Cornelius gritted his teeth and said, Don't worry, I am a phantasmal space realm expert. I possess many means, such that even if you were to lose control of your attack, it wouldn't be that easy for you to hurt me. Xavier was still a little hesitant. I do acknowledge your strength, but we're currently surrounded by the freshman residences. If I were to let loose here, I fear that I'd accidentally destroy the buildings in the area. It had barely been half a day since he returned from outside, but he'd already brought down the Spirit Awakener Hall and the Shrine of Seers. If he were to destroy the freshman residences as well, he might very well end up giving away the Pinnacle Spirit Stone in his hand as compensation. Cornelius took a look at his surroundings. Xavier's residence had become rather... tattered due to the battle they had earlier. Considering how the defensive formations cast over each residence weren't too strong, they just might cause huge destruction if they were to continue fighting like this. Since that's the case, let us head to the Hall of Propriety then. It happens that Felix has brought the students from the Elite Division there to conduct mock battles today. Do you dare to have a duel with me there? Cornelius pondered for a moment before proposing. Hall of Propriety? Hm. Very well then. Xavier nodded. The Hall of Propriety was where students would fight against one another, 
There were top-notch defensive formations there to minimize the destruction resulting from any battle, and there were even spectator stands and mechanisms to analyze one's stats. Not only was there no need to fear causing unnecessary damage, but more importantly, one would be able to gain an insight into one's current strengths and flaws and grow stronger through working on them. Huh. Let's go. Seeing that the other party had agreed to it, Cornelius turned around and headed straight for the Hall of Propriety. Without any hesitation, Xavier quickly followed along too. So far, of the five halls, Xavier had been to the Hall of Erudition, Hall of Attainment, and Hall of Solidarity, but he hadn't been to the Hall of Propriety yet. If the place were as sturdy as the rumors made it out to be, he would be able to head there often to try out his skills. In contrast to the bleak emptiness of the other halls, there was a huge flow of people in and out of the Hall of Propriety. Cultivators were everywhere the eye could see. Even though there were many esteemed occupations on the Master Teacher continent, it didn't change the fact that fighting prowess was still the most vital foundation for a cultivator. For this reason, battling was an integral part of any cultivator's life, and the Hall of Propriety served as a location for that purpose. Each day, it would attract countless students who sought to raise their fighting prowess and cultivation through practical battles. Following Cornelius, it didn't take long for them to arrive at an independent hall. The vast hall was divided into countless dueling rings, each of which was covered in a transparent barrier, a little reminiscent of a glass enclosure. Cornelius pointed over. Felix and the others are over there. Turning his gaze over, Xavier saw Felix, Josh, and the other students of the elite division standing before a dueling ring. Walking closer, he noted that two figures were battling in a nearby dueling ring, and upon a closer look, a smile crept onto his face. The two fighting individuals happened to be familiar faces. Maya and Gavin. The previous time Gavin fought with Maya, he suffered a humiliating defeat, being slapped publicly and even knocked out shortly after. He had been resting over the past few days, and not only did he manage to fully recover from the injuries he had sustained, but his strength had also risen to greater heights. Unable to hold himself back anymore, he immediately challenged Maya to a duel, hoping to avenge himself. Powerful surges of gleam flew here and there within the dueling ring as the two fighters utilized their means one after another, but surprisingly, they were equally matched with one another for the time being. Not bad. Upon seeing the sight, Xavier nodded in satisfaction. Maya had achieved a breakthrough into the Grand Dominion realm under his guidance 20 days before, so he thought that her cultivation would still be a little shaky. Contrary to his expectations, she had already successfully reinforced it, allowing her to stand against Gavin on equal grounds. It seemed like she hadn't been slacking off for the past 20 days. She had already managed to assimilate everything he had taught her. Master Xavier, who do you think will be able to achieve victory? All of a sudden, a voice sounded by the side. Turning his head over, Xavier saw the second ranked of the elite division looking his way, Josh. Previously, Josh didn't think much of Xavier, feeling that a person who had barely met the mark to enroll into the elite division wasn't worthy of his attention. However, after seeing how the latter was able to guide Maya into making a breakthrough, he swiftly realized that the latter possessed extraordinary strength and an eye for discernment. So, thoughts of winning the latter over to his side began formulating in his mind. They... Xavier was just about to answer the question when his eyebrows shot up slightly in surprise. He turned to Josh once more and asked, You offered some pointers to Gavin? He had seen the extent of Gavin's prowess with his eyes in the battle twenty days before. While his cultivation wasn't too bad, his combat skills were still sorely lacking. It was due to that that Maya was able to easily defeat him under his guidance. Had he been as skilled as Cornelius instead, things would have never proceeded so smoothly then. Yet, in this very moment, Gavin was managing to fend off most of Maya's moves, a huge contrast from the incompetent fighter he was before. Most likely, this matter had a lot to do with Josh. I gave him five minutes of my time. 
Josh placed his hands behind his back and said with composure. However, the glee and pride in his eyes couldn't be concealed. The young man before him had managed to induce Maya to achieve a breakthrough within five minutes and defeat Gavin. So, he decided to offer five minutes' worth of pointers to Gavin and have him defeat Maya. His purpose was simple. He just wanted to prove that he was stronger than the young man before him and that his eye of discernment was far superior as well. It's indeed rather impressive that you can induce such improvement in Gavin in just five minutes. Xavier nodded. As expected of the man who was only second to Cornelius in the Mountain Gate examination, it seemed like Josh was no simple character either. The talent and eye of discernment he had shown were already on par with Jimmy and Dale. He only lost out to those two in terms of time and accumulation. It was no wonder why the Matthews clan was publicly recognized to be the number one sage clan on the Master Teacher continent. As much as Xavier was unwilling to recognize it, there was no denying that they had many talents amongst their ranks. So what do you think of the situation? Who do you think will emerge victorious? Josh glanced at Xavier once more and asked. Gavin did improve by quite a bit within this period, but Maya hasn't been slacking off either. I'd say that since Maya won the battle 20 days ago, she should be able to do so this time around too. Xavier replied with a chuckle. Back then, when he was offering pointers to Maya in order to beat Gavin, he had brought up many of the latter's flaws. While the latter did make substantial advancement in his combat skills within this period, it was still impossible for him to shake off all of those bad fighting habits that had already been lodged deep into his bones within such a short period. As long as Maya was no fool, she should be able to uncover quite a few of them easily, exploit them, and achieve the final victory. It was luck the previous time around, and luck won't favor you every single time. Josh remarked casually with a slight smirk as he watched the duel with his hands behind his back. In his view, the reason why Maya was able to achieve victory the last time around was because the young man before him had made a thorough investigation into Gavin's profile, thus winning the Battle of Preparation. So, he made sure to look into Maya carefully and offered Gavin very specific pointers in dealing with her. With this, there was no way on earth that Maya would stand a chance against Gavin. On the other hand, noting Josh's response, Xavier shook his head. In truth, it mattered not to him whether Gavin won or lost the duel. Sometimes, the loser could stand to earn much more out of a duel as compared to the winner. Just take him, for example. He had won so many battles, everything was starting to feel meaningless. In the deepest region of his heart, he deeply craved a defeat from a cultivator of the same cultivation realm. But it was a pity that this simple request of him was never meant to be. No one in this world could give him what he wanted, so this wish was doomed to remain unfulfilled for the rest of his life. While Xavier was deep in thought, in the dueling ring, Gavin seemed to have suddenly activated some kind of secret art, causing his aura to intensify all of a sudden. This abrupt change caught Maya off guard. She was still able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Gavin straight on previously, but at this moment, even dodging was starting to get difficult for her. She was forced to retreat time and time again, and it didn't take long before she was forced into the corner of the dueling ring. From the looks of it, it seemed her loss was sealed. There's no need to watch any longer. The conclusion is clear. Seeing how Maya was trapped, completely losing control of the momentum of battle, Josh's lips curled up in delight. Indeed, the conclusion is clear. Xavier nodded. What he saw was a completely different image from Josh. Even though Maya was indeed forced to the corner of the dueling ring, Every single step that she took was very steady, seemingly intentional actions to lure the opponent in. On the other hand, even though Gavin appeared to hold the upper hand, being in the offensive position, the truth was that he had already lost all composure due to the time limit resulting from the activation of his secret art. Looking at the situation from this perspective, it was clear who truly wielded the upper hand in this battle. It must be said that Maya had been working hard during this period. She had managed to internalize all of his teachings to heart and achieved an even deeper level of comprehension of them. 
it was heartening to see that his efforts weren't wasted. Just as the conclusion of the duel was around the corner, a voice suddenly sounded. Master Xavier, there's no need to worry about causing any accidental damage here. This way, please. Cornelius had already gotten up to another dueling ring with a sword in his hand, and he was looking at Xavier with fighting will burning in his eyes. Cornelius wants to challenge Xavier? But Mr. Xavier is ranked at the very bottom of the elite of his young. Even though he possesses an exceptional eye for discernment and an outstanding ability to guide others, his cultivations are near the living aperture realm. There's no way he could be a match for Cornelius. Isn't Cornelius going a little too far by challenging you? Indeed, what's going on? A huge commotion had broken out amidst the crowd. Without a doubt, Cornelius was the most prominent figure in their batch, and most viewed him as their goal. They hoped that they would be able to surpass him one day, but naturally they also understood how slim the possibility was. Considering how powerful Cornelius was, if he was going to challenge anyone, it should be Josh or the others who were ranked in the top few of the Mountain Gate examination. Why was he challenging the last place person in the elite division instead? Even if he won the battle, his victory would only be frowned upon by others. After all, what kind of glory could one earn from defeating the weak? Brother Cornelius, I can be your opponent instead if you need a sparring partner. Josh stepped forward and said with a frown. However, Cornelius simply waved his hands and said, You aren't a match for me. Those words immediately caused Josh's eyes to turn cold. He leapt into the dueling ring and harumped frostily. How would you know without a fight? In the first place, he was already displeased at being outdone by Cornelius back at the Mountain Gate examination. He was willing to concede that Cornelius was a formidable adversary, but he couldn't accept being told by the latter to his face that he wasn't a match for him. While Josh was still amid his leap toward the dueling ring, he had already gathered strength in his palm and forcefully pushed it down upon the figure who stood in the middle of the dueling ring beneath him. He was afraid that Cornelius would reject his battle, so he used the most powerful capability he had at his disposal from the start, not holding back at all. Not bad. Xavier nodded upon seeing the might of Josh's move. It seemed that Cornelius wasn't the only one who had grown substantially during his absence. Clearly, Josh hadn't been slacking off either. He had already reached the Grand Dominion Realm pinnacle, just a step away from reaching the Phantasmal Space Realm. As expected of the most talented genius of the Matthews clan in this intake, regardless of which aspect one assessed him from, he was indubitably a formidable figure. Like I have said, you aren't a match for me. Standing in the face of Josh's attack, Cornelius didn't even lift his eyelids. Instead, he tilted his body and thrust his palm up in a leisurely motion. Stop being so full of yourself! You might be a talented individual, but I'm also a one-in-a-million genius as well. You never know who will be the one standing at the very end of this battle. Hearing the haughty words coming out of Cornelius' mouth, Josh felt so furious that it almost seemed as if he would erupt like a volcano. As he roared furiously, he drove the gleam in his body to its limits and channeled it all toward his palm, as if he wouldn't be content unless he reduced the entire dueling ring into dust. However, before this surge of strength could even strike Cornelius, Josh suddenly felt the might of the other party's palm piercing right through his attack and striking his chest squarely. With a look of disbelief, Josh was sent flying into the sky before being planted into the ground not too far away. In the view of others, he was sent flying as if he were a mere pesky fly before he could even leap onto the dueling ring. There was probably no better way to highlight the huge disparity in strength between them. A one in a million genius. Cornelius shook his head with a trace of mockery on his face. He gazed down derisively at Josh as he said, Perhaps it's about time for you to wake up from your delusions. Oh, you! Not expecting that he would be knocked down by a single slap from Cornelius despite using his full strength, 
Josh forcefully pulled his head out from the ground and glared at Cornelius with frenzied eyes. He was a person blessed by the heavens. Even within the powerful Matthews clan, he was known as an invincible existence to those around his age. He thought that even if he weren't a match for Cornelius, he'd at least be able to put up a good fight. Yet who could have thought that he would be knocked down before he could even get on to the dueling ring? And most importantly of all, he was even viewed with such disdain. The sheer humiliation he felt from Cornelius's actions left him feeling crazed. But as angry as he was, he also swiftly realized that Cornelius had managed to enter the phantasmal space realm a step earlier than him. It might have only been a small step of difference between the two of them, but this small rift was simply unbreachable. Forcing himself to calm down, several doubts began surfacing in Josh's mind. If he's already reached the phantasmal space realm, why does he still want to challenge Master Xavier? If Xavier's strength was around their level, it could still be understandable that Cornelius could feel threatened by his existence and would want to challenge him to establish his dominance. However, with his breakthrough into the phantasmal space realm, the latter would be considered to have reached the higher echelons of the Sanctum of Sages, such that even some of the senior students wouldn't be a match for him at all. It simply didn't seem logical that Cornelius would be so caught up with a mere freshman despite his immense strength. While Josh was still in a state of confusion, a dull thud suddenly echoed, and a figure suddenly flew over in his direction and landed right beside him. It was Gavin, whom he had thought would win without any trouble earlier. At this moment, Gavin's face was swollen, which was an indescribably wretched sight. The ferocious aura that he commanded previously had vanished without a trace, and he was lying with a rather bizarre posture on the ground. Josh's eyebrows immediately shot up in disbelief. He hurriedly turned to the stage and saw Maya walking down the dueling ring with a slightly pale face, but there was an exhilarated gleam in her eyes. She headed straight toward Xavier before clasping her fist and bowing deeply. Impossible. This is, this is, this is impossible. How can she win against Gavin? It was understandable why he would be sent by Cornelius in a single slap. After all, the latter had already reached the phantasmal space row. But Gavin wielded the absolute advantage in the earlier battle. It was irrational for it to end in such an outcome. It could be said that Gavin's loss was even more inconceivable than his own. Impossible! Hearing those words, Maya puffed up her chest angrily and harumphed. If I can't even defeat Gavin after Master Xavier's guidance, wouldn't that mean that I'm regressing as time passed by? Master Xavier's guidance isn't something that just anyone can learn. Xavier was their young court chief's teacher, and it was a huge insult to compare the guidance from such an esteemed elder to that of an insignificant figure like Josh. Plus, Josh clenched his fists tightly in indignation. It was one thing for him to lose to the phantasmal space realm Cornelius, but to lose to a mere leaving Aperture Realm fellow as well? He couldn't accept this. He just couldn't accept this. Josh narrowed his eyes menacingly. This won't do. Others will eventually find out that I offered pointers to Gavin. What will become of my honor if I were to be found losing to someone as weak as Xavier? Should I just challenge him to a battle? If I subdue him with absolute strength, I should be able to suppress those rumors. At this moment, Cornelius's voice suddenly sounded from the dueling ring once more. Master Xavier, show me if your fool's strength is as formidable as you've put it out to be. As you wish. Seeing that the other party was determined to try him out, Xavier unhesitatingly leapt up to the dueling ring and tapped his finger forwards. Over a hundred swords immediately materialized all around Xavier. Every single one of them was pointed toward Cornelius, each of them carrying a solemn aura. Good. Having tasted how powerful the sword art was earlier, Cornelius dared not to take it lightly anymore. He immediately drew out a semicircle with the sword in his hand and used it as a medium to channel his sword energy together, thus forming something reminiscent of a light barrier. Is that the Master Tater Pavilion headquarters descending Colton's sword art? 
Josh exclaimed grimly. Sending cotton sword art? A bewildered individual amidst the crowd asked. It's a Saint High Tier battle technique created by a master teacher in the Master Teacher Pavilion headquarters while observing the drifting cotton in the air. In terms of defensive ability, it is only second to the flowing water swordsmanship of the Third Sanctum Head. Once executed, a world full of flying cotton would drift around reminiscent of falling flowers, creating an effect similar to that of the ultimate technique of the feminine masculine court, the Fallen Snow Sword, Josh explained. At this moment, he finally realized just how powerful Cornelius was. Even without using his prowess as a phantasmal space realm expert, it would be nearly impossible for him to defeat the latter once the descending cotton sword art was activated. Unless he activated the ability of his unique bloodline. But unless in a life and death situation, it would be best for him not to tap into that power or else he would only be depleting himself needlessly. Even though he commanded quite a high standing in the Matthews clan, which granted him access to a lot of resources, recovering from the side effects of activating his bloodline would still be extremely troublesome. Despite his deep understanding of swordsmanship, he still chose to take a defensive stance right at the start of the battle. Did this mean that Xavier wielded the strength to stand against Cornelius? Amidst his shock, Josh also seemed to have dawned upon something as he turned his gaze to the young man standing opposite Cornelius with a look of intrigue. If even someone as powerful as Cornelius opted to take a defensive stance right at the start of the battle, wouldn't that mean that Xavier was even more powerful than him? But no matter how powerful Xavier could be, he was only a mere leaving Aperture Realm cultivator. There was bound to be a limit to how powerful he was. Josh shook his head as he turned his gaze back to the dueling ring, not wanting to miss anything of the duel. He saw Cornelius tapping his left hand forward. Along with a surge of gleam, another layer of a light barrier was formed in front of him. That's the Big Dipper Orgen Aegis! Josh's lips twitched in disbelief. If Cornelius's execution of the descending cotton sword art had already left him deeply bewildered, the activation of this light barrier had left him disconcerted. The Big Dipper Origin Aegis was a secret art that a nine-star master teacher from the Master Teacher Pavilion headquarters came up with while observing the seven stars of the Big Dipper. This technique was known for its impenetrable defense against those of the same cultivation realm. But to execute this technique on top of the defensive descending cotton sword art, just what in the world was Cornelius trying to guard against? However, that wasn't the end of his shock yet. Cornelius flicked his finger and crushed a jade token that materialized from his storage ring. A layer of light purple shimmer swiftly covered him. That's a protective amulet forged by a phantasmal space realm expert. Even though it's not as powerful as the Grand Cosmos protective amulet, it's still more than enough to guard against the attack of any Saint Level 7 expert. Josh's lips twitched once more. Aren't the two of you going to fight with one another? Why is Cornelius throwing out so many defensive measures then, even activating an invaluable protective amulet? Just what in the world is Xavier capable of to instill such deep fear in him? While Josh was still in a state of absolute bafflement, Cornelius's body began bulging once more, and in the blink of an eye, he transformed and grew even more muscular and brawny. Wait a moment, isn't that the Master Teacher Pavilion Headquarters Golden Toad Metamorphosis? It's said to have been created by a master teacher while observing the cultivation method of the golden toad. This technique will cloak one in a thick layer of scales, granting one unparalleled defense and strength. Josh tugged at his hair in a frenzy. But what in the hell is he guarding against? The first thing every cultivator would learn was how to defend. Only when one was capable of defending themselves would they be able to slay their opponent. Understanding this logic, Josh often spent his time studying the various defensive techniques out there in the world, so he was extremely knowledgeable about the subject. But to activate so many formidable defensive means at once, had Cornelius gone insane? Or was Xavier worthy of him setting up so many defensive measures? Paying no heed to the completely flabbergasted crowd below, Xavier asked with a smile, Are you ready? 
I'm ready. You can start now. Cornelius took in a deep breath before nodding. While he thought that it was very likely that Xavier was bragging, just to be safe, he still chose to utilize every single defensive means at his disposal. Very well. Brace yourself. Saying these words, Xavier tapped his finger ahead. The gleam in his body was immediately infused into the swords in the sky, and in the blink of an eye, the swords had already whizzed forward, forming a massive sea of sword energy, drowning Cornelius within it. Josh's face turned aghast at the sight, and he retreated eight steps as cold sweat trickled down his head. He had just made a quick calculation and found that even if he were to devote his full strength to defense, he would still stand no chance at withstanding that attack. Wasn't Xavier just a leaving Aperture Roam cultivator? How could he possess such astounding offensive prowess? Josh felt his throat turning hoarse from sheer fear. In his peripheral vision, he caught sight of Felix staring at the dueling ring with his mouth agape, and as if someone was grabbing onto his throat, his body trembled uncontrollably. Astonished by Felix's reaction, Josh turned his gaze over and asked, Felix, you aren't able to withstand that sword art either. Felix slowly closed his eyes before shaking his head. Suppressing the horror he felt within, he replied with a bitter smile. I'm afraid so. If he were to execute it against me in a real battle, there's a fair chance that I might lose my life. It's that powerful! Josh's eyes nearly bulged out of their sockets. It was fortunate that he didn't challenge Xavier earlier on, or else he could have very well landed himself in a far worse state than Gavin was in. No wonder why he was able to make Jimmy and Dale submit to him. I didn't think that I would fail to see through him as well. Without a doubt, he is the most terrifying individual in your batch, Felix exclaimed. What? Jimmy and Dale submitted to him? Josh felt as if a lightning bolt had just fallen upon him. He had been too busy cultivating over the past few days that he wasn't aware of the most recent happenings in the Sanctum of Sages. Indeed, Jimmy came to look for me yesterday to obtain Xavier's profile, saying that he'd been beaten up by the latter and wanted to exact vengeance. And from the looks of it, it seems like he hasn't fully recovered from his injuries yet, Felix said with a nod. Xavier was a freshman, and Felix was the person in charge of this new batch of students. Naturally, if Jimmy wanted to uncover anything concerning Xavier, the best way was to go through him. It was due to this that he found out about the matter of Xavier beating up Jimmy. Even though Jimmy refused to elaborate on the matter, the tragic state he was in was more than enough for Felix to fathom a good guess about what had happened. As for Dale, I just heard news that Master Xavier had challenged the Spirit Awakener Hall and became its Inceptive Sage. The first thing he did after becoming the Inceptive Sage was to enchant Dale's body and command it to hit itself. Hard. Felix flicked his wrist and threw a communication jade token over. Considering the huge ruckus that his student had caused, naturally as the person in charge, he had already received the relevant news. He became the inceptive sage of the Spirit Awakener Hall, and he enchanted the physical body of a living human. Josh's lips twitched, and he nearly collapsed to the ground. All along, he thought that the only one worthy of his attention in this batch of freshmen was Cornelius. But who could have thought that there would be a true monster lurking in their midst? Others might not be familiar with them, but he knew the Matthews brothers very well. They were top geniuses in the Matthews clan, his idols for some time. And yet, they were defeated by a freshman. If these words hadn't come directly from Felix, he wouldn't have dared to believe such a thing to be true. A question suddenly surfaced in Josh's mind, and he asked, Given his strength and capability, why did he only rank 50th in the entrance examination? Since even he was able to clinch second place, Xavier should be able to take the first place easily with just the swordsmanship he was executing. Recalling what had happened back then during the entrance examination, Felix said, 
It's probably because he has a humble personality and wishes to maintain a low profile. Otherwise, isn't it too much of a coincidence for him to be exactly in 50th place? No more, no less. It was only in the last three minutes that Xavier shot up to the 50th place, not showing any hints of his astounding talent before that. Very clearly, he'd been holding himself back throughout the examination. You're right. Having heard of that incident as well, Josh nodded in realization as admiration seeped into his eyes. He couldn't help but exclaim, He is too low profile. To increase their chances of eventually becoming inceptive sages in the Sanctum of Sages, every single one of them pushed themselves to perform to the best of their abilities during the entrance examination. Taking him, for example, he didn't sleep a wink for the three days of the examination, fearing that a moment of slack could mean a loss of opportunity for him. On the other hand, the young man was content with just enrolling in the elite division. Ranking and the sort didn't mean a thing to him at all. In fact, even when he was doubted by so many people, he didn't even bother to speak up against them. As tranquil as a still lake, achieving a state of perfect inner peace. This must be what true experts, true talent, and true humility truly were. Indeed, if not for Cornelius' challenge, I would have never known that there was such a formidable figure in this batch of freshmen. Felix remarked as well. He was just about to continue showering Xavier with praises when a student suddenly rushed over to him and whispered a few words in his ear. His eyebrows suddenly shot up and he quickly turned around. Elder Harrison, what brings you here today? Felix asked with the utmost politeness. Josh also quickly turned around and he saw an old man with snow-white hair standing before him. This old man seemed to exude a transcendental aura similar to a deity from the heavens. Elder Harrison? Josh quickly recounted everything relating to the Sanctum of Sages he had seen in the Matthews clan, and his face swiftly turned grim. First elder of the Sanctum of Sages Spirit Awakener Guild, a Saint Level 8 expert. Josh noted in shock. He hurriedly clasped his fist and bowed. Matthews clan's Josh pays respects to Elder Harrison. There's no need to be so formal. Elder Harrison casually waved his hand before turning his gaze to the dueling ring anxiously. When will Master Xavier be done with his battles? May I know the reason why Elder Harrison is looking for Master Xavier? If it's an urgent matter, I can help you stop the duel, Felix said. The other party was the strongest expert of the Sanctum of Sages Spirit Awakener Hall. Even if Master Xavier had become the Inceptive Sage, it still shouldn't warrant the other party coming down here to personally look for him. I don't know how I should speak of this. Hearing Felix's question, Elder Harrison's face turned scarlet in embarrassment. I just want to ask him when the guardian golem he enchanted earlier will finish its run. And due to its increasing speed, it's already knocked down the halls of four other guilds in the vicinity of the Spirit Awakener Hall. If this doesn't stop soon, I'm afraid that our Spirit Awakener Hall will become a public enemy in the Sanctum of Sages. Just by having the Guardian Golem walk seven and a half steps, one would have already broken the record for the Spirit Awakener Hall for the past 3,000 years. Yet, not only did the young man make the Guardian Golem do warm-ups, he even made it run non-stop. It had already been a few hours now, but it was still sprinting relentlessly, refusing to stop. He had tried to stop it, only to be knocked over every single time. He was completely helpless against it. And honestly speaking, it would still be fine if the Guardian Golem were to obediently run its lap. Due to the unique nature of the material used to craft the Golems, it was only a matter of time before it came to a halt. But... The golem just had to do frog leaps, push-ups, squats, leg raises, sprints, fast sprints, front rows, back flips, and somersaults on top of that. And that wasn't the worst of it yet. The lap it was running was growing bigger and bigger, 
such that it was beginning to expand its running course through the various guilds situated in the vicinity of the Spirit Awakener Hall, crashing down everything that stood in the way of its run. If it didn't stop soon, the other guilds might just destroy their guardian golem out of rage, which would be truly problematic. A guardian golem of the Spirit Awakener Hall is running non-stop. It's knocked down quite a few guilds already. Felix and Josh staggered. Also, when I came over, I saw that the Shrine of Seers had been reduced to rubble. According to what I've heard, it seems to be related to him too. So I was a little worried that they might attempt to cause him trouble, Elder Harrison said. The Shrine of Seers has been reduced to rubble? Felix and Josh looked at one another with twitching lips. What happened to being low profile? These were matters that no low profile individual would pull off. Unable to take it any longer, they raised their gazes toward the dueling ring, and what they saw was Cornelius being pressed against the transparent glass like barrier around the dueling ring, his face warped like a fried dough twist. Sword energy continued assaulting him relentlessly from all sides, and his eyes seemed to have lost all light as if he had lost all hope for life. Too powerful. The four barriers which Cornelius had prepared in advance had all shattered, and his entire body was filled with sword slashes. At this moment, he appeared no different from a miserable beggar. Seeing this sight, the two of them couldn't help but gulp down a mouthful of saliva. For the might of the sword energy to remain so powerful even after tearing down so many defensive barriers. This level of offensive power was something which not even Felix was capable of. Seeing that the barrage of sword energy was still pushing forward relentlessly, showing no signs of stopping at all, Felix shouted, Master Xavier, I'd like to ask, when will... However, before he could finish his words, Cornelius's furious bellows echoed, You liar! Fire! Did you said that you only used the sticks of your full strength? But you only used the... Elia, the direct disciple of Master K was already on the verge of going insane. When the other party first said that he had only used a third of his strength, he immediately thought that it was a lie. Then, when the other party said that it was a sixth instead, he became even more convinced of his prior assumption, which was also the reason why he proposed coming there to see for himself whether the other party's words were true. But, in the end, a sixth did turn out to be a lie as well, because it wasn't a sixth, but a tenth. It was only when the gleam in Xavier's body was drained of its final drop did the sea severing sword finally come to an end. While gasping for air, a look of helplessness could be seen on his face. Even with the massive increment in his gleam capacity to fivefold of its original amount and the recent breakthrough of his cultivation from the leaving Aperture Realm primary stage to the pinnacle, he was still unable to fully control the sea severing sword. Once executed, he would have to deplete his gleam dry before he could stop. In the past, due to his lack of gleam, the sea severing sword would stop after a few breaths. This time around, however, the barrage of sword energy lasted for a whole ten minutes before finally fading to an end. Exhaling deeply, Xavier retracted his swords from the dueling ring before raising his head. The first thing he saw was Cornelius being pressed against the transparent barrier of the dueling ring in a very weird position. Nearly all of his clothes had been ripped at this point, and while he still had breath remaining in him, he had sustained severe injuries. I didn't lie to you. While I was executing my sword art, new inspiration suddenly came to me, allowing me to raise its prowess by a little bit more. Xavier quickly rushed over to help Cornelius down from the protective barrier while explaining in a slightly awkward tone. This time around, it wasn't his fault. He hadn't lied to the other party at all, it was simply because he had never executed the Sea Severing Sword with such might before, so there was plenty of time for him to experiment with new things amid its execution. Through trial and error, 
he managed to gradually refine the might of the sea severing sword, thus resulting in its offensive might growing stronger and stronger. While there were already no flaws in the sea severing sword at this point, the might of his attack was still affected by how well he could coordinate his spirit and movements together. Naturally, the more in harmony he was with his sword play, the stronger his swordsmanship would be. You can raise the might of your sword art by such a huge proportion amid its execution, Cornelius asked in shock as he reverted to his original form. It took a while before Cornelius finally recovered from his distraught state. He glared at Xavier furiously and said, You are indeed formidable, but as master teachers, our core responsibility lies not in combat, but in teaching. So, I would like to challenge you to a duel of impartation. At this moment, Xavier had already finished instructing Elder Harrison on how he could control the Guardian Golem. Hearing that Cornelius still wanted to continue the duel, he couldn't help but say, uh, Why don't we just forget it? I I'm afraid that you'll be traumatized by it. He had no idea why the other party was so insistent on challenging him, but if they were to compete in a duel of impartation, there was a good chance that the other party might just succumb to his mental trauma and go insane. There's nothing for me to be traumatized over. My teachers told me I'll be his only direct disciple, but all of a sudden, you appeared as well. I would like to see just how formidable a person you are that he would make an exception and take you in as well, Cornelius harumphed. Make an exception? Those three words made Xavier's eyes light up. Judging from those words, it seemed like the other party still hadn't realized that he was a fake yet. The other party thought that Master K had secretly accepted another student behind his back, so he had come over to confront him out of jealousy. And of course, the other party hadn't expected to suffer such a tragic defeat as well. Some formidable master teachers in the world would leave their acceptance of students up to fate. As a result, other than himself, not even his students might necessarily know of each other's existence. Having read quite a few books, Xavier was aware of some of the eccentric quirks of master teachers. Take him, for example. If he were to take in another student right now, Sarah, Rose, Alan, and the others would be unaware of the existence of their new junior. It's only out of sheer luck that I managed to win our teacher's favor. Seeing that Cornelius wasn't intending to expose his fake identity, Xavier heaved a sigh of relief. He looked at the other party with an expectant look and asked, I haven't seen our teacher for quite a long time now. May I know where he is at the moment? Cornelius shook his head. I lost contact with our teacher two years ago, so I'm not too sure of his whereabouts at the moment either. I've tried to reach him through a communication jade token, but it doesn't seem like he's able to receive my messages. Oh, that's a relief. Xavier nearly leapt up in joy upon hearing those words. All this while, his heart had been leaping in trepidation, fearing that the other party would tell on him. However, since the other party was unable to contact Master K, that would mean that he was at least safe for the moment. As long as he became the sanctum head before Master K returned, with his newfound esteem standing, no one would dare to challenge him, even if his lie were to be exposed then. In other words, time was vital to him at the moment. He would have to make haste, or else everything could just blow up on him. That's a relief. Cornelius's eyebrows shot up. Shouldn't he be disappointed that he was unable to contact their teacher? Why would he be getting so excited instead? Oh, I misspoke. What I meant to say is, that's a bummer. Realizing that he had accidentally spoken his thoughts out loud, Xavier quickly changed his words. Your words don't seem to match your attitude. Cornelius eyed Xavier in skepticism before asking, So, how is it? Will you accept my challenge? Junior, you aren't a match for me, so why don't we just drop the matter? 
since we're both Master K's students, I don't want to traumatize you unnecessarily. Xavier waved his hand casually. Junior! Cornelius nearly exploded on the spot. I've been with our teacher since I was seven, and I'm older than you too. You should be addressing me as senior instead. Isn't there the saying that it's the proficient one who should be viewed in esteem? I'm stronger than you, so it should go without saying that I'm your senior. If you can defeat me any day, I'll be more than happy to call you senior, Xavier replied leisurely. Since Cornelius was unaware of his lies, he could make use of him as a shield to verify his identity as Master K's student. What? You! Cornelius's face turned scarlet as words choked up his throat. Despite possessing cultivation far beneath his, it was a fact that the other party's fighting prowess was way greater than his. Just on the sword art executed earlier, had the other party not redirected the might of the sword art elsewhere to reduce the impact on him, there was no way he would still be alive right now. Considering that they were both direct disciples and that their teacher hadn't explicitly stated their seniority, the convention was to view the stronger disciple as the senior. And, given that he was unable to defeat the other party, there was indeed no convincing reason why he should be the senior. We'll decide that after the Jewel of Impartation. If you can defeat me once more, I'll willingly acknowledge you as my senior. Cornelius flung his sleeves and harumphed coldly. Seeing that Cornelius was reluctant to give up on the idea, Xavier frowned. Just as he was about to speak up, a young man suddenly rushed into the hall with a peculiar look on his face. Elder Felix, uh, Elder Cecil of the Corridor of Puppets is waiting outside. Uh, he says that he wishes to acknowledge Xavier as his teacher. Elder Cecil wishes to acknowledge Xavier as his teacher. Deathly silence devoured the entire hall. Even though Elder Cecil was just a bottom-level managerial elder, his cultivation had already reached Saint Level 7 Phantasmal Space Realm. For such an expert to run over and acknowledge a leaving Aperture Realm cultivator as his teacher, was there not something wrong here? The group of elite division students shot horrified glances at one another. Cornelius felt a stinging sensation on his face. It was just a moment ago that he had insisted on challenging the other party to a duel of impartation when an elder possessing far higher cultivation than him came over to acknowledge the other party as his teacher. It was as if he had lost the battle before it was even fought. That face slap had simply come too quickly. On the other hand, Josh felt completely crazed. For even an elder to acknowledge him as a teacher how was that low profile? Elder Cecil from the Corridor of Puppets? Xavier was also taken aback for quite a moment before realization struck him. More than 20 days ago, while he was challenging the Corridor of Puppets, he had failed to rein in his strength and accidentally destroyed the entire corridor. Feeling deeply guilty of his actions, he had decided to offer some pointers to Elder Cecil, advising him against practicing the Hymal Feminine Formula. Back then, the other party didn't seem to have paid much mind to his advice. However, the fact that he had rushed over to acknowledge him as his teacher meant that something must have gone wrong. Upon making sense of the situation, Xavier waved his hand and said, Let him in. Yes. The student shot a glance at Felix, and upon receiving the latter's approval, he quickly backed out of the room. Not too long later, two students walked into the hall with a stretcher. A frail-looking old man was lying on the stretcher, and he looked as if he would lose consciousness at any moment. Standing by the side of a stretcher was an elder with a flowing white beard. His eyebrows were tightly knitted, reflecting a grim expression. Cornelius's eyebrow shot up upon seeing that elder, and he exclaimed in astonishment, Divine Healer Siler! Siler? Xavier turned his gaze over to the elder as well. Even though it had been more than twenty days since he enrolled in the Sanctum of Sages, he had spent a huge portion of his time outside, so he was unfamiliar with most elders and experts there. He's the person in charge of the Physician Guild in our Sanctum of Sages. 
His medicinal skills are said to have reached an unfathomable level, to the point that he's said to be able to breathe life back into any dying patient. Due to that, others respectfully address him as the Divine Healer, Cornelius explained. In terms of fighting prowess, Divine Healer Siler was nowhere near the top, but without a doubt he was one of the most esteemed figures in the Sanctum of Sages. Countless experts were indebted to him, and they would rally upon his call. As such, he commanded great prestige and fame. Xavier nodded in response to Cornelius's words. To have to be brought in on a stretcher with the divine healer following beside him. Did Elder Cecil ignore my advice and continue practicing the Heimal Feminine formula? Xavier thought as he frowned in disapproval. He had specially warned the other party against cultivating that technique, but the other party still landed himself in such a state. It was almost as if the other party was toying with his own life. Physician Siler stepped forward and asked, Are you Xavier? On the stretcher, Elder Cecil exclaimed, Yes, he's Aster Xavier. Master Xavier, please. You, you. At this moment, his face was completely pale, and it seemed as if there was a layer of frost atop his skin. His body was trembling, and before Xavier could even respond, he was already struggling to push himself upright. What happened? Xavier asked Elder Cecil with a grim voice. To be honest, the reason he didn't deal with the problem regarding Elder Cecil on the spot back then was not only because the latter had a lack of trust in him. Even if the Elder continued practicing the high mall feminine formula, it shouldn't have caused too much of a problem in the short run. His warning should have led the latter to take preventative measures as soon as he realized that something was amiss. So how did the latter end up in such a state? I doubt, or else no one will be able to save you. Divine Healer Siler tapped Elder Cecil back onto the stretcher before turning to look at Xavier. Are you the one who told him to stop practicing the high mall feminine formula a while ago? I did, Xavier replied. Utter nonsense! Divine Healer Siler waved his hand angrily as he glared at Xavier coldly. Did you try to fully understand the complexity of his physical condition before offering such advice? Do you know how severe a consequence you have caused by running your ignorant mouth? What do you mean by that? Xavier asked with a deep frown, not expecting to be bellowed at by the other party. To compensate Elder Cecil for the damage he had caused, he used the Library of Heaven's Path to check on the other party's condition. He was suffering from some kind of trauma, which would only be further aggravated by the cultivation of the Heimal Feminine Formula. The continued cultivation of that technique would bring greater strain to his body, so he decided to offer a word of advice to the other party. Yet, why was this divine healer Siler making it seem as if Elder Cecil's current condition was caused by the advice he had offered? Taking a step back, even if he were wrong, surely a Saint Level 7 Elder wouldn't be so obedient as to stop cultivating the Heimal Feminine formula altogether, especially if it would cause huge problems to his body. What do I mean by that? Placing his hands behind his back, Divine Healer Siler sneered coldly. Cecil was afflicted with fire poison while fighting with others a long time ago, so he requires the Heimal Feminine formula to suppress it. Yet, you advised him against cultivating it, resulting in a fire poison to relapse. Are you going to deny that this is your fault? Huh? If you don't know the slightest thing about medicine, you should never diagnose others on a whim. If you are a physician, that makes it even worse. Did your teacher not teach you to never jump to a conclusion without analyzing the patient's physical condition carefully? A misdiagnosis can easily cost a person's life. Divine Healer Siler roared vehemently in anger. He had a close relationship with Elder Cecil, and he didn't think that he would find the latter on the verge of death just after a few days of absence. How could he possibly not be angry? If not for the latter, listening to the atrocious advice of this young man, such a thing would never have happened. Are you trying to tell me that his condition is a result of the fire poison acting up? Xavier asked with a deep frown. Indeed, what he is afflicted with is the boreal fire poison. Once it acts up, 
The surface of his body will become as cold as ice, but his innards will burn like magma underground. Before long, his gleam will be burned dry, and his aura could very well be crippled. That is the reason he has to practice the high feminine formula to keep the fire poison under control. Physician Siler harumphed coldly. Boreal fire poison? While Xavier didn't think much of the term, Felix trembled in horror upon hearing those words, and his face paled conspicuously. Physician Siler, are you referring to the boreal fire poison found in the Harka Subterranean Gallery? Harka Subterranean Gallery? Oh, of the many subterranean galleries that link the Master Teacher Continent to the otherworldly battlefields, there are seven that are known to be extraordinarily dangerous. And the seventh on the list is the Harka Subterranean Gallery. Oh, I've heard of it too. The most frightening aspect of the Harka Subterranean Gallery is this boreal fire poison. Despite being a flame, it harnesses all of the attributes of frost as well, commanding both the powers of heat and cold. Even a Saint High-Tier artifact would find itself melting instantaneously into liquid in its face. Such hushed discussion could be heard from the crowd and the surroundings. Most of the students in the Sanctum of Sages were top geniuses that came from all kinds of major powers and clan, so they had some knowledge of the various subterranean galleries, even though it was classified information. Indeed, it is that boreal fine poison. Back then, to prevent the otherworldly demons from reaching the Master Teacher continent, he bravely dove into the midst of flames to fend them off. While he managed to survive the ordeal by sheer luck, he was unfortunately afflicted with fire poison as a result. Physician Siler sighed with a shake of his head. I have tried all kinds of means to treat him, even blood and bone switching, but none of them worked. In the end, I could only make him practice the Hymal Feminine Formula to suppress it temporarily. The reason I left a while ago was to seek the Nymphaea Tetragona, hoping that it could resolve his problems once and for all. Yet, who would have thought that a freshman like you would convince him against cultivating the high more feminine formula, causing the fire poison to relapse and even assault the depths of his soul? Even I'm completely helpless before such a situation. Hearing Divine Healer Siler's words, everyone turned their gazes to Xavier. Even Felix had a deep frown on his face. Physicians carry a heavy responsibility on their shoulders. As the saying goes, an incompetent physician kills. As such, if a physician is uncertain about a patient's condition, it would be best for them to not treat the patient. Otherwise, they would only be harming themselves and others. Physician Siler, I know that you're worried about me, but that isn't entirely the case. The reason I stopped practicing the Heimol Feminine Formula is because I could feel problems cropping up in my cultivation. Mr. Xavier doesn't have any blame in this matter, Elder Cecil said feebly. Even after what he's done to you, you're still speaking about him? Divine Healer Siler harumphed coldly in response to Elder Cecil's words. He was able to tell that... I... Is the primal feminine formula with just a look. So, I found his words credible, Elder Cecil said weakly. The Heimal feminine formula was one of the rare cultivation techniques that wouldn't manifest its properties in one's gleam, making it extremely hard to discern. Yet, the young man was still able to recognize it with just a single glance. He had been overwhelmed by shock at that moment, and after returning to his residence, he had given the matter much thought and felt that the young man's words made perfect sense. Thus, he eventually decided to reduce his cultivation of the technique. Initially, he could feel himself getting better and better. But who would have expected that the fire poison would suddenly act up three days before, placing him in the current condition he was in? Even Divine Healer Siler found himself completely helpless before his condition. With no other choice, he had suddenly recalled the words of this young man, so he had decided to seek him out. Considering how the young man was able to see through his Heimal Feminine formula and wield such astounding strength despite his young age achieving feats that even the Princess of the Natalie clan failed to achieve, he thought that the other party 
just might have a way to resolve his current condition. That led to the previous declaration that he wanted to acknowledge the young man as his teacher. As long as his affliction could be resolved, what qualms did he have with taking the young man as his teacher? Not to mention, if the young man were able to cure the boreal fire poison, it would mean that his medicinal skills had reached a level that even the higher elders of the Sanctum of Sages would be deeply impressed by. Credible! If he's credible, do you think that you'd be reduced to such a state? Divine Healer Siler was so angry that he could have exploded on the spot. He really could not understand the mindset of this old friend of his. He was the Divine Healer of the Sanctum of Sages, but instead of believing him, his old friend chose to trust a mere student who had just cleared the entrance examination a couple of days before. Enough! Just let me take a look at his condition. Seeing how the duo was still arguing with one another at this point, Xavier walked toward Elder Cecil. He had checked on Elder Cecil's condition using the Library of Heaven's path, and given the state he was in then, there would be no problem with him stopping the Hymal Feminine Formula altogether. So why would the fire poison suddenly relapse? You want to take a look at his condition? Do you even know medicine? Divine Healer Siler sneered coldly. In response, Xavier casually flicked his wrist and threw an emblem over. Catching it, Divine Healer Siler lowered his head to take a look, and a slight hint of astonishment flickered across his eyes. It was a physician emblem with seven glistening stars on it. As a seven-star physician, even if the young man's medicinal skill was far beneath his, he shouldn't be someone who would take a patient's condition lightly and spout nonsense. Knowing that the young man wasn't just fooling around, Divine Healer Siler's hostility alleviated slightly, and he said with a wave of his hand, Fine, take a look then. I hope that you can give me a satisfactory answer today. Felix and the others also looked at the situation intently, curious about what the young man would do. Xavier had displayed amazing prowess in swordsmanship earlier, and his ability to guide others on their cultivation was also extraordinary. Not to mention, he had also managed to become the inceptive sage of the Spirit Awakener Hall. If he were proficient in the way of medicine, too, that would be truly incredible. Paying no heed to the crowd, Xavier walked up to Elder Cecil and placed his fingers lightly on the latter's pulse. A moment later, he shook his head. Seeing that there was something wrong with the young man's expression, Elder Cecil asked with a deeply apprehensive tone, What's wrong? Xavier was silent for quite a while before saying hesitantly, Elder Cecil, I would like to discuss something very important with you. Master Xavier, feel free to speak as long as I can be freed from my pain. I won't turn down any requests that you have. Elder Cecil replied in a feeble tone, reminiscent of an old man on his deathbed. Ah, oh, that's good. Xavier heaved a sigh of relief. With an earnest look, he said, I would like to knock you out for a moment. Knock me out? Xavier scratched his head awkwardly. That's right. Uh, if it's not convenient for me to do it, you can also faint by yourself. In any case, as long as you're out, I will be able to discern the root of your illness and treat you. Given Elder Cecil's current condition, it was infeasible to have him stand up and execute a punching routine. The fastest way was to knock the other party out and analyze him through the Library of Heaven's Path as an artifact. Previously, he could still rely on medicinal herbs to knock others out, but that wouldn't work on a Saint Level 7 expert like Elder Cecil. Utter nonsense! Before Elder Cecil could say a word, Divine Healer Siler had already lashed out furiously. As the head of the Sanctum of Sages Physician Guild, he had a deep understanding of the various diagnosis methods out there, and this was inclusive of those eccentric and unorthodox ones. But one that required the patient to be knocked out. Pardon his ignorance, but he had almost never heard of something like that. Once a person was knocked out, there would be some deviation in their metabolism and other internal functions. While it was still possible to examine external injuries, 
it would be hard to analyze the internal traumas that the patient was afflicted with in such a state. So, for the young man to ask to knock Elder Cecil out right from the start, just what the heck was he up to? How about it? Will you knock yourself out, or should I do it instead? Paying completely no heed to the raging divine healer Siler, Xavier looked at Elder Cecil with a compassionate smile. Oy! Elder Cecil also doubted the existence of such a diagnosis method in the world, so he instinctively turned to divine healer Siler with a confused gaze to seek confirmation. Forget it, I'll just do it myself then. Noticing Elder Cecil's hesitation, Xavier decisively raised his hand and chopped down toward the top of Elder Cecil's head. The surrounding air swiftly compressed together, making breathing highly difficult. Just as Xavier's chop was about to reach the other party's forehead, he abruptly pulled his hand back. A short but resounding sonic boom echoed, and Elder Cecil immediately fainted. Was that the air compression spirit clearing art? Not even eight star physicians are capable of pulling off that secret art. Divine healer Siler's eyes narrowed in shock. The air compression spirit clearing art, Felix asked. There are some injuries and illnesses that the treatment process is simply too difficult for those lacking in mental fortitude to bear. Thus, to prevent any unnecessary complications during the treatment, it would be best for the patient to be knocked out. However, regardless of whether it is the use of anesthesia or any other means, it would leave a certain degree of damage in the patient's body. This air compression spirit clearing art makes use of a sonic boom resulting from the movement of one's palm to stimulate one's primordial spirit, forcing one to lose consciousness temporarily. The ability to knock out a patient without causing any damage to their physical state can make a huge difference to patients who are already in a critical state and cannot take any more trauma. For this reason, most physicians would seek to learn it, uh, even though it is a uh, demonic tune in the strictest of senses. But unfortunately, it is an extremely difficult skill to master. Even I'm still unable to perform it. Who would have thought that that fellow over there would be able to pull it off? At this point, a hint of doubt surfaced in the eyes of Divine Healer Siler as he asked, Could it be that he's a highly skilled demonic tunist too? On the other hand, seeing that Elder Cecil had been knocked out, Xavier heaved a sigh of relief. He placed his fingers on the other party's pulse once more. A book materialized in the Library of Heaven's Path, and he quickly flipped it open. With just a look, his eyebrows immediately began twitching wildly. He turned to the elder behind him and lashed out furiously. You incompetent physician! Will you only be happy after you treat Elder Cecil to his death? What did you say? Divine Healer Siler's face darkened upon hearing those words. Hailed as the divine healer in the Sanctum of Sages, putting aside managerial elders, even the top elders would have to address him respectfully. Yet this fellow dared call him an incompetent physician. The burning rage within him nearly caused him to blow up on the spot. Unable to control his temper, a terrifying aura gushed forth from him, plunging the surroundings into the midst of winter. Everyone's body immediately stiffened. Saint Level 8 Pinnacle. An expert of this caliber could already be considered one of the top figures on the Master Teacher continent. Unfazed by the pressure from Siler's aura, Xavier bellowed, Are you really unaware of what I'm saying? If you don't know how to treat Elder Cecil, just keep your hands off him. To think that you call yourself Divine Healer. Or like Goodbye Healer. You. Seeing the Deep disdain in the young man's eyes, Divine Healer Siler felt a feeling so suffocating in his chest that it felt as if he would explode. He had never been humiliated in such a way. He glared coldly at Xavier before forcefully reining his power back in. Flinging his sleeves coldly, he said, No matter what your background is, if you cannot give me an explanation that I am happy with today, do not blame me for getting physical with you. Those qualified to enroll in the Sanctum of Sages usually came from illustrious backgrounds. As angry as Divine Healer Siler was, he still didn't dare make a move recklessly. 
You still want me to explain to you? Xavier shook his head and snorted. He turned his gaze to the fainted Elder Cecil and abruptly raised his leg and kicked his head. What are you doing? Divine Healer Siler roared in shock. Given the strength and speed behind Xavier's kick, if it were to hit, Elder Cecil's face would explode. Divine Healer Siler rushed forward and flicked his hand, creating a ripple through space with his power of dimension sundering, thus successfully deflecting Xavier's attack. Get this hindrance out of the way. In the face of Divine Healer Siler's impediment, Xavier raised his eyebrows and flicked his wrist. Divine Healer Siler was slightly startled by Xavier's words, and before he could even process what was being said, his heart suddenly jolted in fear. A netherworld azure dragon beast suddenly materialized right before everyone's eyes, and a thick tail swept right in Divine Healer Siler's direction. <laughs> Before Divine Healer Siler could even react, he was struck squarely in his shoulder. An intense pain assaulted him as he was sent flying backwards. He was in the same cultivation realm as the Netherworld Azure Dragon Beast, but the latter was still more powerful than him due to its innate dragon bloodline. On top of that, its appearance was too sudden, so he was caught off guard, causing him to suffer a setback right from the start. Oh. <clears throat> you bastard. Divine Healer Siler snarled with a livid expression. He immediately prepared himself to dash forward once more, but before he could make a move, the Netherworld Azure Dragon Beast was already before him. Despite its massive physique, the movement of the Netherworld Azure Dragon Beast was as swift as a bolt of lightning. Its enormous claws tore sharply through space, falling upon him. Given the speed at which the claws were moving, Divine Healer Siler knew that he would not be able to evade in time so he clenched his fists tightly to face the attack. The collision between the two experts caused a turbulent shockwave to ripple into the surroundings. The transparent barriers that shielded the individual dueling rings from the surroundings wavered, flickering in and out of existence as if they would succumb to the pressure and shatter. At the same time, conspicuous spatial ripples could be seen spreading outward, forcefully pushing the crowd back. What is happening? Why did that saint be suddenly appear out of nowhere? Felix, Cornelius, and the others were dumbstruck. Were they not treating Elder Cecil? Why would they suddenly start fighting one another? Furthermore, the Netherworld Azure Dragon Beast was obeying Xavier's command, so it should be his tamed beast, right? But how in the world did he manage to tame a saint level 8 beast in the first place? A tamed beast can be considered a beast tamer's strength as well. If I challenged Xavier earlier, I would have been tragically defeated. Josh felt cold sweat drenching his back. At this moment, he felt deeply thankful that Cornelius had spoken up before he did. Otherwise, just a claw from the Netherworld Azure Dragon Beast would have been sufficient to spell his death. The inceptive sage of the Spirit Awakener Hall, pummeling Jimmy and Dale, subduing Cornelius with a single sword art, berating Divine Healer Siler without any hesitation, and bringing out such a powerful saint beast in public. Previously, Josh had thought that Xavier was an extremely low-profile person, but from the looks of it now, it seemed that he just didn't know the latter well enough. There was probably no one as high-profile as him. In fact, even most high-profile individuals would only cause a commotion every now and then. But this fellow was inciting incidents one after another as if he wouldn't be content until he was constantly at the forefront of everyone's mind. To think that he had even thought that this fellow was unworthy of his notice at one point in time. Even if he had viewed that fellow as his rival, that fellow might not even think he was worthy of his attention. The gap between the both of them was simply too great. Shaking his head helplessly, he turned his gaze to the young man not too far away once more, only to see that the latter was not paying any attention to the battle in the sky. Instead, he was looking at Elder Cecil with a hint of viciousness in his deep black eyes. Time to begin, the young man muttered. He raised his leg once more and aimed it right toward Elder Cecil's head. It landed on his head and in an unconscious state, he didn't have the slightest ability to retaliate at all. He was sent flying right off the stretcher, smashing right through one of the walls of the dueling rings. Josh's lips twitched. 
Just what kind of grudge did he have with Elder Cecil? Or rather, what in the world was Xavier up to? He should have known that he would never get out of the Sanctum of Sages alive if he killed Elder Cecil. While overwhelmed with shock, Josh saw Xavier rushing over in Elder Cecil's direction, and before the latter could even land on the floor from the previous kick, his leg whipped forth once more. Like a football, Elder Cecil flew into the air. It was hard to tell whether it was an intentional action or not, but the direction that Elder Cecil was flying toward happened to be where Physician Siler and the Netherworld Azure Dragon Beast were clashing. Both parties were pitting their full might against one another, causing an insane amount of power to ripple into the surroundings. Even ordinary half Saint Level 9 experts wouldn't dare get close, let alone the unconscious Saint Level 7 Elder Cecil. Before he could even come close, the might was already beginning to ravage his body, threatening to tear him to shreds. It's over. Felix nearly collapsed to the ground from the sheer horror of what he was seeing. Given how intensely the two experts were clashing with one another, unless a Saint Level 9 expert were to intervene in the battle, it would be impossible to stop them. Felix knew that even he would lose his life if he got involved at this point, much less the unconscious Elder Cecil. <laughs> Not expecting Xavier to make such a move either, Divine Healer Siler was appalled. However, he had already released his full might and it was too late to retract it now. No matter how he shouted, it wouldn't make a difference. Just as everyone thought Elder Cecil was doomed to die, a light buzz suddenly sounded from his body and the frost shrouding his body abruptly expanded outward, forming a sphere of mist that extended for a radius of nine feet. After which, the sphere began to surge upward forming something reminiscent of a giant lotus flower. The overwhelming power between the clash of the might of Divine Healer Siler and the Netherworld Azure Dragon Beast struck the lotus, and astonishingly, even though it wavered slightly, it wasn't destroyed at all. As such, the unconscious Elder Cecil didn't sustain any damage. It seemed like the lotus had saved his life in this desperate moment. Upon seeing this, Divine Healer Siler and the Netherworld Azure Dragon Beast were startled for an instant. The clash of their strengths was strong enough to cause even the massive protective formations cast over the Hall of Propriety to waver. And yet, a mere lotus that sprouted from Elder Cecil was able to neutralize their attack entirely. Just what in the world was it? Now! As if having expected this situation, Xavier flicked his wrist and took out the pinnacle spirit stone that Joel had given him previously. Holding it tightly in his left hand, he began furiously absorbing its energy. Concentrated spiritual energy surged into his body, swiftly filling up the depletion he had sustained previously. Then he lifted his right hand and tapped forward. The Salvatore sword abruptly burst forth to strike down upon Elder Cecil. Amid its movement, the sword energy imbued within the Salvatore sword extended to over several dozen feet, as if attempting to sever the world into two. The sword cut down on the lotus shrouding Elder Cecil, and shockingly, the seemingly invincible lotus began shattering like a mirror. How is that possible? Divine Healer Siler was stunned. Even the combined might between him and the Netherworld Azure Dragon Beast was insufficient to destroy the Lotus, and yet the other party managed to cut it apart with just a surge of sword energy. Could it be that the young man was even stronger than him? Perhaps even reaching Saint Level 9? After a moment of shock, Divine Healer Siler swiftly came to a realization. It was not that the young man was far stronger than him or anything else. Rather, the Lotus was already left on the verge of shattering after the combined attack between him and the Netherworld Azure Dragon Beast, and the young man had aimed his attack at the very opening of the Lotus. Because of that, he was able to destroy the Lotus with a single strike. Nevertheless, it was still an extremely formidable feat. Even though he hadn't managed to find the opening of the lotus that had appeared out of nowhere, the young man was able to see right through it, even accurately striking down on it from afar with his sword energy to destroy the lotus. 
not harming Elder Cecil in the slightest. It had to be said that his eye for discernment and control over his strength had reached an astonishing level. While Divine Healer Siler was feeling deeply impressed by the young man's feet, he lowered his head to take a look at the young man, only to see that the latter didn't show the slightest hint of joy at having sliced apart the lotus. Instead, there was a tight knot between his eyebrows and his face was slightly pale. Oh, what's going on? There's something bizarre about the lotus. Just as Divine Healer Siler was about to ask what was wrong, he suddenly heard shocked voices from the crowd below. He immediately turned to look in Elder Cecil's direction and saw that the mist of the shattered lotus had attempted to dive into Elder Cecil's body once more as if it had a life of its own. <laughs> Don't you dare! With a cold harumph, Xavier flicked out several dozen silver needles and flung them in Elder Cecil's direction. The silver needles fell right on the various acupoints all over Elder Cecil's body, impeding the mist from delving back into it. As if meeting its nemesis, the mist released a sizzling sound upon contact with the silver needles before dissipating. Heaving a sigh of relief, Xavier waved his hand and pulled Elder Cecil back from the sky, gently placing his back onto the stretcher. Then he tapped his finger lightly on the latter's forehead. While violently coughing, Elder Cecil opened his eyes once more and spurted black blood, after which he sat up from the stretcher. A resounding cracking sound reminiscent of snapping bamboo shoots sounded from within his body. Divine healer Siler widened his eyes in shock. He's making a breakthrough in his cultivation. He was well aware of the circumstances surrounding his old friend. Under the assault of the fire poison, his friend's vitality had been waning constantly, putting him on the verge of death. Even with his superior medicinal skills as the divine healer, he was still unable to treat him. Who would have thought that with just a few needles and a simple tap on the forehead, the young man would be able to induce a breakthrough in his old friend? Could he be seeing things? Before he could recover from his shock, more and more cracking sounds echoed from Elder Cecil's body. Following this, his cultivation swiftly surged, rising from Saint Level 7 Intermediate Stage to the Pinnacle within moments. Even so, the momentum in his surge of strength showed no sign of calming down. Elder Cecil shattered his Phantasmal Space Realm Pinnacle bottleneck within ten breaths, and a dominion tinged with the power of dimension sundering suddenly extended from his body. It was only then that the rise in his cultivation gradually slowed to a halt. Half Dimension Sundering Realm. To rise from the Phantasmal Space Realm Intermediate Stage to the Half Dimension Sundering Realm in a single shot, this rate of cultivation could be said to be unprecedented. Divine Healer Siler's lips twitched uncontrollably. The cultivation of his old friend had never risen ever since he was afflicted with the fire poison. For several centuries now, he had remained stagnant at the Phantasmal Space Realm Intermediate Stage. Who would have thought that he would suddenly experience such a tremendous surge in his cultivation, shattering all of the bottlenecks that lay in his path? Oi! Elder Cecil was also shocked beyond words. Feeling the overflowing power harnessed within his body, he sat in a daze on the stretcher, wondering if he was in a dream. Before he was knocked out, his vitality had been swiftly dissipating, putting him on the verge of death. But when he opened his eyes, not only did he fully recover from his illness, but his cultivation had also risen by leaps and bounds. At this point, he was deeply frightened that he would simply wake up and find that it was all a dream. He slapped his face, and, to his relief, stinging pain assaulted his cheeks. I'm still alive! The sudden realization of this fact made Elder Cecil tremble in agitation, and even to his surprise, tears began streaming down his cheeks. For many years, he had teetered on the edge of death. He had thought that his time had finally come, and death had descended upon him to claim its dues. Yet at this very last moment, a savior appeared, and not only was his affliction cured, but he even achieved a breakthrough in his cultivation. He pushed himself up from the stretcher and walked up to Xavier, standing before the young man who had brought him out of his anguish. His knees fell to the ground. Master Xavier, thank you for saving my life. 
Even though he had been unconscious and was oblivious to what had happened, he could tell that Xavier had paid a heavy price for him just by looking at the latter's pale face and trembling body. There's no need to be so formal. To be honest, I, I didn't have much confidence either, considering the critical state you were in. It's a huge relief that everything turned out fine. Xavier replied with a forced smile. He suddenly collapsed to the ground. This time, his injuries were not fake. He had just depleted himself from executing the sea-severing sword when he had to deal with Elder Cecil's fire poison. Even if he had a pinnacle spirit stone in hand to replenish his spiritual energy, the immense mental toll he had been put under still left him on the edge of fainting at any moment. Master Xavier! Elder Cecil hurriedly stood up to support Xavier. Divine healer Siler also quickly descended from the sky to examine Xavier. Ah, oh, don't worry. He's just suffering from overexertion. With sufficient spiritual energy and time, he should be able to fully recover from his condition without any lingering trauma. The reason he wanted to make a move on Xavier earlier was because he thought that the young man bore malicious intentions toward Elder Cecil. But with all that had happened, it was apparent that he had misunderstood the young man's intentions, so all hostility he bore toward the young man had disappeared without a trace. More importantly, he had been looking into his old friend's condition for several centuries now, only to remain deeply helpless before it. Yet, in less than three minutes, not only did the young man manage to resolve his old friend's affliction, but he even induced a breakthrough in the latter. On top of that, there was no medicine or any complex procedure to the treatment process at all. This left him feeling deeply perplexed. Oh, that's good. That's good. Hearing that Xavier was fine, Elder Cecil heaved a sigh of relief. Master Xavier, just what is going on? Divine Healer Siler asked. He had been a physician for many centuries now, but he had never seen any treatment method like this. And what was even more confounding was that it was extremely effective, vanquishing the affliction in just a few moments. Pardon me for my earlier insult. I had to provoke you to treat Elder Cecil, so I hope that you won't take it to heart. Struggling up for a moment, Xavier clasped his fist apologetically. Don't worry about that. I, I won't take it to heart. Divine Healer Siler waved his hand. Putting aside being berated, even if he'd been beaten up, he felt that it would have been well worth the price for his old friend to be treated. Not to mention, he had been able to witness such miraculous medical skills on top of that. This had deeply incited his curiosity as a physician. Divine Healer Siler clasped his fist and requested, with an earnest look in his eyes, Master Xavier, I ask you to answer my doubts. Hearing those words, Felix, Cornelius, Josh, and the others also quickly turned their curious gazes over in their direction. If Elder Cecil had ingested a pill and driven his gleam in certain circulation pathways to resolve the fire poison, it would have been understandable that he achieved a breakthrough. But what had happened earlier, knocking out the patient, criticizing the principal physician, and pummeling the patient to the ground? How the heck did it turn out to be another treatment method? It was completely inconceivable to the crowd. If it were that easy to treat an affliction, there wouldn't be so many patients who died of illnesses each day. Seeing Divine Healer Siler's intent gaze, Xavier said with a bitter smile, My apologies, but will you allow me to heal up a little before answering your doubts? He was feeling so feeble that he could faint at any moment now. Oh, uh, of course, of course, uh. Uh, please, uh, pardon my lack of consideration. Divine Healer Siler quickly replied in embarrassment. He had been so focused on learning that he had forgotten the young man's current state. I have an energy repository pill here that can help you recover from your depletion. Divine Healer Siler flicked his wrist and passed a jade bottle over. As the top physician in the Sanctum of Sages, countless patients sought his treatment each year. As a result, he had plenty of good items on him. Xavier took out the energy repository pill from the jade bottle, and after taking a look at it, he shook his head helplessly. The pill was of good quality, but to him, it wasn't of much use anymore. Due to his Heaven's Path gleam, there was a strict requirement on the concentration of spiritual energy that he could absorb, 
The higher his cultivation became, the higher the requirement was. While the energy repository pill would be effective to even the average dimension Sundering Realm expert, it was no different from a piece of candy to him. Thank you, but I'm afraid that this pill is completely ineffective to me. Xavier shook his head as he passed the pill back into Siler's hands. It's ineffective. Siler was taken aback. I still have a couple of them here if you need more. Physician Siler, I appreciate your goodwill, but I think I'll find a way myself. At this point, Xavier hesitated for a moment, but he still couldn't bring himself to use his pinnacle spirit stone fully. So, he turned to the elder by the other side and said, Elder Cecil, may I trouble you a little? Master Xavier, there's no need to be so formal. Feel free to say whatever you require, as long as it is within my means. Consider it done. Elder Cecil nodded. Ah, oh, that's a relief. Xavier nodded as a hint of excitement flashed across his eyes. Then, Elder Cecil, I need to trouble you to achieve a breakthrough into the Dimension Sundering Realm. Achieve a breakthrough to the Dimension Sundering Realm? Elder Cecil was stunned. Shouldn't the first instinct of a dream cultivator be to look for spirit stones and pills to recover their vitality? Why was the young man asking Elder Cecil to push for a breakthrough to the Dimension Sundering Realm? It didn't make sense at all. Furthermore, pushing for a breakthrough to the Dimension Sundering Realm meant that Elder Cecil would have to face a lightning tribulation. After years of turmoil from the fire poison, his body had already been emptied. If he attempted to push for a breakthrough right now, it was likely that he would be zapped to death. Divine Healer Siler was completely dumbstruck as well as he thought, Surely you aren't intending to send him to death's embrace shortly after pulling him back from the gates of hell? I need you to push for a breakthrough to the Dimension Sundering Realm for me to recover. The reason you were able to make a breakthrough so quickly is due to the energy you've accumulated over several centuries. If I'm not mistaken, you should have enough drive in you to push for a breakthrough to the Dimension Sundering Realm, right? Xavier asked feebly. The reason Elder Cecil was able to achieve so many breakthroughs at once wasn't because of his exceptional talent or Xavier's miraculous treatment, but because of the hard work he had put into cultivating over the past several centuries. Previously, his cultivation had stagnated mainly due to the fire poison, but once that had been resolved, the energy he had accumulated over this long period immediately burst forth, allowing his cultivation to soar. Considering how much he had accumulated over the years, Elder Cecil shouldn't have just stopped at the half-dimension Sundering Realm. It would be sufficient for him to push to higher realms, just that he chose to suppress it forcefully out of fear for the dimension Sundering ordeal. But, Elder Cecil was conflicted. Don't worry, you will succeed, Xavier told him with a resolute gaze. All right then. Seeing the deep desire and conviction in Xavier's eyes, Elder Cecil gritted his teeth and removed the limitation he had placed on his cultivation. As soon as the energy was released, the surrounding air began growing viscous. Following this, through their spiritual perception, the crowd realized that storm clouds were beginning to congregate above them. Don't challenge your dimension sundering ordeal here, or else the formations could cause the lightning tribulation to run amok. Let's head outside instead and... But halfway through his words, Xavier suddenly widened his eyes and halted. On top of the defensive formations cast over the individual dueling rings, there were also aura-isolating formations that served to prevent anything within from getting out. As such, it was likely that the Lightning Tribulation wouldn't be able to find its target and it would strike the area in frenzy instead, similar to what had happened when he challenged his leaving Aperture ordeal. But while this might end in a tragedy to others, this was exactly what he was wishing for. The storm clouds would grow bigger as a result of being unable to find their target, thus providing a greater source of energy for it. Just thinking of how it would be bigger than Joel's, Xavier couldn't help but tremble in agitation as he looked at Elder Cecil with eyes filled with desire. You're right, I'll go out. Elder Cecil nodded, but just as he wanted to leave the main hall, the young man suddenly shook once more, and his body seemed to have become even feebler. It's fine. You don't have to head out anymore. Doing it here is fine. 
Xavier then turned around and instructed, Netherworld Azure Dragon Beast, you head out to attack the Lightning Tribulation first. You want me to attack the Lightning Tribulation? The Netherworld Azure Dragon Beast cowered, and it nearly plummeted from the sky. It had been through the Dimension Sundering ordeal before, and it had nearly died from that damn Lightning Tribulation. Its fear toward the Lightning Tribulation was so great that it would be paralyzed in the face of it. And yet, to attack it straight on. It was still young. It didn't want to die. Master, can I eat a yacht? Go. The Netherworld Azure Dragon Beast looked at Xavier with large, pleading eyes, which might have possibly looked like puppy eyes had they not been as big as lanterns. If you feel that I haven't done a good job at beating up that Filer guy earlier, I can continue hitting him till you're happy. Just don't make me face the lightning tribulation. Divine Healer Siler's mouth quivered upon hearing those words. Stop with your nonsense. Just hurry up and do it. Xavier frowned in displeasure. All right. Grumbling beneath its breath, the Netherworld Azure Dragon Beast headed out with a despaired look. A moment later, the ominous clouds grew even bigger. Xavier nodded in satisfaction before turning to Siler. Physician Siler, I'll need you to attack the Lightning Tribulation too. Me too? The fine healer Siler's lips twitched upon hearing those words. I'll be troubling you, but don't worry, there won't be any problem. Knowing what the other party was worried about, Xavier replied earnestly. I know what I'm doing. You know what you're doing? Siler's body trembled. Noting the other party's hesitation, Xavier said, Since I have a way to drag him back from the gates of hell, I hope that you can believe me when I say that I have a way to help him tide through the lightning tribulation too. All right, then. After a long moment of hesitation, Divine Healer Siler looked at Xavier's confident expression and recalled the miracle that the young man had pulled off earlier. Thus, he gritted his teeth and dashed out. Seeing how Xavier had instructed the Netherworld Azure Dragon Beast and Divine Healer Siler to intercept Elder Cecil's Lightning Tribulation, Felix, Cornelius, and the others were completely flabbergasted. Just what in the world was the young man up to? In a certain room of the Hall of Propriety, several elders were seated in an oval. The green-robed old man sitting at the end of the oval was the person in charge of the Hall of Propriety, Elder Hugo. Half of those matters they can be resolved in such a manner. Elder Hugo was instructing the other elders when his eyebrows suddenly shot up and he sprung to his feet. Hmm? What is it? Someone is undergoing the lightning tribulation. Who in the world is so inconsiderate as to face the dimensions under an ordeal? This is bad. The entire whole of propriety could very well be destroyed. Sensing the congregating storm clouds and ferocious crackling of lightning in the sky, the other elders also swiftly noticed that something was amiss. If such powerful bolts of lightning fell upon the hall of propriety, the entire place could very well be reduced to rubble. I said all of the elders needed to protect the hall of propriety. Hugo roared decisively before leaping up into the sky. In the blink of an eye, another dozen managerial elders leapt up as well, and, floating amid the sky, they looked at the accumulation of lightning with awful looks on their faces. They had looked over the Hall of Propriety faithfully for many years, so how could they allow anything to undo their hard work? After seeing that all of the elders had gathered around, Hugo bellowed an instruction with gritted teeth. Help to George! I need you to check who is undergoing the lightning tribulation here! Of all the places that a person could undergo their lightning tribulation, why did they have to choose there? There was a facility in the Hall of Integrity built solely to assist cultivators in facing their lightning tribulation by alleviating the effects of inner demons. Yet, to choose to do it here instead, was he intending to bring the entire Hall of Propriety down with him? Elder George quickly nodded, but just as he was about to head into the main hall, he suddenly saw a netherworld azure dragon beast rushing out with a sonic boom, and with a golden hue infused into its claws, it dashed straight toward the storm clouds. Having come under the assault of another party outside of the cultivator supposed to face the ordeal, the area of the storm clouds immediately expanded. All of the elders were frenzied by what they saw. Hurry up and save Sentinel! 
Hugo immediately barked. However, before any of the elders could move, the highly esteemed divine healer Siler suddenly flew out of the main hall as well. With a flick of his wrist, he channeled imposing might in his palm, and with a forceful thrust, he struck it out toward the storm clouds in the sky. The storm clouds immediately expanded to over a thousand feet wide, covering the vast expanse of the entire Hall of Propriety. Sila, what are you doing? Hugo nearly went insane on the spot. Divine Healer Siler had a rather close relationship with the other elders in the Hall of Propriety, and they often went out on expeditions in search of treasures and medicinal herbs together. Yet, in this crucial moment, despite seeing that someone was undergoing a lightning tribulation, not only was he refusing to help, he was even attacking it. This was no different from seeing a burning house and quickly grabbing a bottle of gasoline to pour on it. Paying no heed to Hugo, Siler channeled his might into his palm once more and sent another strike toward the storm clouds. Provoked by those who dared challenge its rules, the lightning tribulation sent down two thick streaks of lightning upon the netherworld azure dragon beast and Siler. In just an instant, the bodies of the duo stiffened as their hair and dragon scales stood on end before plummeting to the sky. The authority of the heavens is a dual challenge. Hugo remarked with a shake of his head, after which he raised his hand and roared, Activate the grand defensive formation of a whole of propriety to fend off the lightning tribulation. At the same time, take out the fellow who is undergoing his dimension thundering ordeal would have him sent off to the whole of integrity immediately. Yes, two elders quickly nodded, but just as they were about to dash into the main hall to grab the cultivator undergoing their dimension thundering ordeal, the charred Siler and Netherworld Azure Dragon Beast suddenly flew up once more and sent another furious surge of power toward the storm cloud. The lightning grew even larger. Lightning sparks crackled imposingly amid the storm clouds as if heralding an impending catastrophe. Divine Healer Siler and the Netherworld Azure Dragon Beast were both Saint Level 8 Pinnacle experts, so their provocation easily caused a massive intensification of the lightning tribulation. At this point, what was above them could no longer be considered a dimension sundering ordeal. Even a Saint Level 9 expert would have a layer of skin torn off facing something of that caliber. How were we supposed to survive such a lightning tribulation? Elder Cecil collapsed weakly to the ground, paralyzed on the spot. Just who in the world did he offend to warrant such a treatment? It was just a moment ago that he was dragged back from the gates of hell, rekindling hope once more in him. However, in the blink of an eye, he was shoved into the abyss of despair yet again. Even though he had built up an extremely powerful foundation over the years, he knew very well that he would never survive even the first bolt of lightning from the billowing storm clouds above him. Calm down, everything will be fine. Just let those two make it a bit larger and we'll be done. Noticing Elder Cecil's panic, Xavier patted his shoulder and reassured him. Elder Cecil felt even more stifled. All right, I think it should be about time. Let's head out now. Seeing that the Lightning Tribulation had already congregated to its limit under the combined assault from the Netherworld Asher Dragon Beast and Siler, seemingly about to lose control at any moment, Xavier shook his head slightly in pity before beckoning Elder Cecil to follow. Theoretically speaking, it was possible for a lightning tribulation to endlessly grow stronger as long as it were to come under continual assault. But limited by its foundations, it would start crumbling apart once it grew beyond a certain size. We'll die if we head out at this point, Elder Cecil exclaimed with a pale face, his legs trembling uncontrollably. Even though he'd been through many life and death situations, he still couldn't help but feel natural apprehension and fear toward the might of the heavens. Ty, <laughs> don't worry, that won't happen under my watch. Knowing what Elder Cecil was frightened of, Xavier assured him with a radiant smile. I'll help you deal with your lightning tribulation later on. What you have to do is release your strength whenever you see that the lightning tribulation is getting smaller or on the verge of escaping. Got that? Lightning tribulation getting smaller? Oh, no, no, on the verge of escape? Elder Cecil was dumbstruck by those terms. He could understand those words individually, 
but it became incomprehensible to him when they were strung together in a sentence. <laughs> Master Xavier, can you phrase it more clearly? I, I, I don't understand what you're saying. I, 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 I don't. It's fine. You don't get what I'm saying at this point. Just keep my instructions in mind and act accordingly later on. Knowing that it would be hard for him to explain this matter in a way that sounded convincing to Elder Cecil, Xavier didn't bother to elaborate further. Instead, he flicked his wrist and took out various items to prepare as he began making his way out of the main hall. Seeing how confident Xavier was, Elder Cecil was a little lost for a moment. He briefly hesitated before he finally bucked up his courage and followed Xavier with a severe look on his face reminiscent of a soldier marching to his death. Josh gulped nervously before asking, Felix, shall we head out to take a look, too? Felix nodded. Even though they were indoors, they could still somewhat sense the sheer size of the storm clouds through their spiritual perception. From how densely the lightning tribulation was gathered around them, they roughly estimated that it spanned over an area of a million square feet. If it were to descend on them, it was likely that none of them would be able to escape. But, since Xavier was so confident about the matter, it would be worth heading out to see how he intended to deal with this crisis they were in. Cornelius quickly headed out as well, but barely after taking a few steps, he saw Josh stumbling over his own feet nearly falling to the ground. He immediately frowned. A throng. As a genius of the Matthews clan, Josh should have been through plenty of huge affairs before. Surely he didn't need to be so frightened as to stumble over his own feet when they weren't even completely out of the main hall yet. Right? Completely oblivious to Cornelius's question, Josh stared ahead with widened eyes as he muttered in a daze beneath his breath. What the hell is Master Xavier doing? Frowning, Cornelius turned his gaze forward as well, and the sight that he saw left him frozen silly on the spot. In this very instant, Xavier had whipped out a white cloth from somewhere and folded it neatly before his chest, elegantly took out a cup of water and gargled its contents, as if he was about to enjoy a sumptuous course in a high-end restaurant. Is he going to eat something? Cornelius scratched his head frenziedly at that sight. Was that fellow here to challenge the lightning tribulation or dine on delicacies? In his moment of shock, he saw Xavier and Elder Cecil walking out of the main hall. As soon as the star of the show appeared, the storm clouds in the sky immediately began rumbling intensely, seemingly ready to fall at any moment. Master Xavier, regardless of whether I can tie to this lightning tribulation or not, I'd still like to thank you for saving my life. Elder Cecil was still a little afraid before this, but upon seeing the vast expanse of the storm clouds that plunged the entire world into darkness, he realized that there was no way he'd be able to escape anymore. It was either do or die. Perhaps it was the realization that he was completely helpless in this situation that made him accept the position he was in instead. As someone who had bravely charged into the midst of the boreal fire poison to fend off the otherworldly demonic tribe, Elder Cecil was no wimp, or else he wouldn't have been promoted to become a managerial elder in the Sanctum of Sages in the first place. There's no need to waste your breath on such emotional words. Nothing will happen to you. Just stay right here and wait for me. I'll be right back, Xavier interjected with a wave of his hand before decisively leaping into the midst of the sea of lightning above. He's dashing right into the storm clouds. But he'll die like that. Everyone was stunned. Even Elder Hugo nearly fell from the sky upon seeing this sight. They had seen cultivators who turned around as fast as they could upon meeting lightning, and they had also seen those who would bury themselves as deep underground as they could to hide from the lightning. But this was the first time they had seen someone dashing right into a lightning tribulation. Master Xavier! Not expecting Xavier to make such a move, Elder Cecil's eyes reddened. The other party was dashing into the lightning tribulation all for him. Just as he was about to dash in as well to assist the young man in fending off the lightning tribulation, the storm clouds suddenly billowed, and oddly enough, just as the young man had told him earlier, the storm clouds seemed to have contracted considerably. <laughs> 
perplexed Elder Cecil was just wondering whether he should release his energy as the young man had instructed him to do earlier, but then the lightning tribulation suddenly turned around and fled as if it had met its nemesis. Its speed was so fast that not even the fastest cultivator could catch up with it. With the escape of the storm clouds, the sky swiftly cleared up, revealing Xavier's profile in the sky. At this moment, the young man was looking at the escaped storm cloud with a helpless look on his face. Just as he was about to speak up, his chest suddenly puffed up. <laughs> a resounding burp similar to the beating of a drum echoed loud and clear. Did he dive into the storm clouds to eat? But what's edible inside storm clouds? Cornelius, Josh, and the others looked at one another with horrified expressions. That was a lightning tribulation, something that even the most powerful of cultivators would have a headache facing. Yet, that fellow rushed right in to have a meal, even releasing a resounding burp right afterwards. Did he need to be so arrogant? Unable to hold it back any more, Felix asked, Elder Cecil, that was your dimension centering ordeal, right? What's going on? How am I supposed to know what's going on? Elder Cecil was on the verge of losing it as well. True, that was indeed his lightning tribulation, but from the start, it was as if nothing had to do with him at all. While others had to struggle desperately to survive their lightning ordeal, he simply just took a look at his lightning ordeal, and a few moments later, it fled. To be honest, he was completely dumbfounded by the matter as well, and he didn't know what to make of the situation. Try your cultivation. If you can tap into the power of Dimension Sundering, that means that you successfully cleared the Lightning Tribulation, Cornelius suddenly suggested. Elder Cecil nodded as he took a look into his current condition with his spiritual perception. A moment later, his eyes widened and his mouth opened. Oi, made a breakthrough. Without even lifting a finger, he had already gone through his Lightning Tribulation. This had to be the easiest breakthrough anyone had made in the entire history of the Master Teacher Continent. As expected. Hearing Elder Cecil's acknowledgement, Cornelius's mouth twitched. He lifted his head once more to look and saw the young man who had dove into the storm clouds a moment earlier, slowly descending with a look of pity and bitter regret on his face. Seeing the young man's state, Elder Cecil hurried forward and asked worriedly, What's wrong? It's nothing much, Xavier waved his hand. He had thought that with how much the Netherworld Azure Dragon Beast and Divine Healer Siler had expanded the storm clouds, he would be able to make a full recovery. Yet, who could have known that the Lightning Tribulation had grown cunning after being absorbed twice, fleeing exceptionally decisively this time around? As soon as he dove into the storm clouds, he immediately began absorbing the lightning energy around him frenziedly, but... Barely after he recovered the gleam in the looped space of his aura to 70%, the lightning tribulation had already noticed that something was amiss and it unhesitatingly turned around and escaped. From the looks of it, I should really frequent the Hall of Integrity, since that's the place where students and elders of the Sanctum of Sages visit to aid them in achieving breakthroughs. There should be plenty of lightning tribulations there. Xavier stroked his chin as he made up his mind. Attainment, Solidarity, Propriety, Erudition, and Integrity. Each of the five halls served its purpose. Of them, the Hall of Integrity served to reinforce one's mental resilience, thus reducing one's vulnerability to inner demons when pushing for a breakthrough. For this reason, countless students would visit it each day. If there was no way around it, he could consider camping at the Hall of Integrity to absorb any lightning tribulations that arrived there he should be able to make substantial progress in his cultivation that way. Cecil, so, you managed to achieve a breakthrough. While Xavier was contemplating his plans, Divine Healer Siler descended from the sky, and upon seeing the dimension-sundering realm Dominion extending from his old friend, a deep hint of astonishment surfaced on his face. He had thought that this breakthrough would surely be fraught with danger, but who would have thought that it would pass by so calmly as if all the build-up before was nothing but empty threats? Amid his shock, he directed a look of admiration toward the young man before him as well. Just what's going on? 
Divine Healer Siler couldn't help but ask once more. The matter concerning the Lightning Tribulation is a secret art imparted to me by my teacher, so I'm afraid that it'll be inconvenient for me to speak too much of it before others, Xavier said with a wave of his hand. Then, what about the fire poison that Cecil was suffering from before? Seeing that the young man was unwilling to speak about the Lightning Tribulation, Divine Healer Siler turned the topic to the fire poison, which he'd been deeply intrigued about all this while. Oh, the boreal fire poison that Elder Cecil was afflicted with could indeed be suppressed using the Hymal Feminine formula. But as time went by, it started to develop its own consciousness, Xavier explained. Divine Healer Siler pondered for a moment before nodding. Consciousness? You mean that a spirit developed within the boreal fire poison? There were indeed poisons in this world that possessed consciousness, granting them the ability to avoid danger. These were the poisons that usually left both patients and physicians helpless. Yes, since it developed its own consciousness, the boreal fire poison began to consciously avert the suppression of the high mal feminine formula. As a result, the cultivation of the technique was not only ineffective in suppressing the poison, but it caused his physical condition to further deteriorate as well. It was for that reason that I persuaded him to stop cultivating the high mal feminine formula, Xavier continued. He had gathered this through the Library of Heaven's Path earlier, which was also the reason he had offered Elder Cecil the advice to stop practicing the Hymel Feminine Formula. Under normal circumstances, as long as Elder Cecil stopped cultivating the technique, considering that the fire poison was under the control of a conscious spirit, it shouldn't have acted up in the short term. With ample preparation, it should have been possible to get rid of it once and for all in a single go. But you just had to bring in the Nymphaea Tetragana at this moment. Recalling what he had just seen after knocking Elder Cecil out a moment ago, he couldn't help but shake his head. The Nymphaea Tetragana is, indeed, one of the nemeses of the Boreal Fire Poison, and it would have worked had the Fire Poison not awoken its consciousness yet. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. When Elder Cecil ingested the Nymphaea Tetragana, it swiftly induced a violent response from the Boreal Fire Poison. Under the conscious control of the Boreal Fire Poison spirit, it managed to assimilate the power of the Nymphaea Tetragana and further its prowess. In the first place, Elder Cecil's vitality was already waning, and the strengthening of the fire poison further worsened his physical state. As a result, he rapidly succumbed to the onslaught of the poison, thus resulting in his frail state a while. Upon coming to realize what had happened, Divine Healer Siler's face reddened in embarrassment. It was just a moment ago that he had felt indignant at the other party, saying that he was an incompetent physician. But after hearing everything that Xavier had said, what was he if not an incompetent physician? It was because of his careless prescription of the Nymphaea Tetragana that his old friend had nearly lost his life. There was a slight moment of silence from Divine Healer Siler before he asked once more, Then how did you manage to resolve it? Even though the other party had resolved the poison right before his eyes, he was still unable to make sense of how it had been done. Oh, well, it's rather simple. Uh, the birth of a spirit in the boreal fire poison made it a far more fearsome adversary, but at the same time, its possession of consciousness meant that it had a goal and thus it could be manipulated. Uh, the goal of the fire poison was rather simple. It wanted to absorb more energy and grow as fast as possible. In a sense, the boreal fire poison could be viewed as a parasite, and it had a somewhat symbiotic relationship with its host. Or, to put it in simpler terms, it was against its interests to allow its host to die quickly, or else it would lose its source of nutrients. That's also why I intentionally provoked you and had you clash with the Netherworld Asher Dragon Beast. Uh, by having the both of you execute your strongest moves and placing Elder Cecil amid your clash, the Boreal Fire Poison would feel deeply threatened. And to sustain Elder Cecil's life, it would have to morph into a lotus and protect him from your attacks. While it did succeed in protecting Elder Cecil, your attacks were so powerful that it suffered tremendous damage, placing it on the verge of dissipation. In this timely moment, I used my sword to strike down on its opening, causing it to be unable to hold its form anymore and dissipate. However, that didn't mean that the threat of the fire poison was over. In its severely injured state, the remnants of the boreal fire poison sought to delve back into Elder Cecil's body, where it would slowly bide its time and recover. 
but it ended up being halted by my silver needles, thus eventually resulting in its complete dissipation. And without the fire poison suppressing his cultivation, the energy that Elder Cecil had accumulated over many years swiftly burst forth, allowing him to achieve successive breakups. And as for the happenings afterwards, it's exactly as you've seen, so I'll just stop here, Xavier said with a smile. The entire matter was not that complex at all. The main issue only lay in the boreal fire poison within Elder Cecil's body developing a spirit. To think that the consciousness of a poison could be used against it in such a manner, Divine Healer Siler remarked in awe as he nodded in realization. It was a well-known fact among high rank physicians that lethal poisons that had developed their spirits were the most difficult to deal with. But who knew that it was possible to resolve the complicated issue with such a simple solution? Indeed, Xavier said with a nod. He was just about to continue when his eyes suddenly lit up in excitement. The innate fetal poison within me is also a poison that possesses a spirit. Is it possible for me to use the same method to deal with it? Xavier took a look into his body, and eventually he shook his head helplessly. All it took was one glance to tell that the innate fetal poison wasn't as compassionate as the boreal fire poison. Putting aside saving its life, it would already be a great blessing if it didn't backstab him when he was in danger. It would be better for him not to take the risk. It was one thing if he failed to resolve the innate fetal poison, but if he were to lose his life as a result of it as well, it would be a huge tragedy. After all, he didn't possess Vicious's ability to revive from scraps. Young master, speak of the devil. As soon as he thought of Vicious, the latter's voice immediately sounded in his ears. Yes, Xavier asked with a frown. As the Sanctum of Sages was filled with innumerable experts, Vicious would usually avoid communicating with him unless there was something truly important. Under the onslaught of the lightning earlier, Heathcole's will that permeates the entire sanctum of sages dulled slightly, and in for a moment, I felt the presence of my skeletal frame. Vicious's voice was filled with agitation and excitement, and the entire Book of Heaven's Path seemed to be trembling in resonance with his emotions. Skeletal frame? W which part? Xavier asked. Vicious was simply too fragmented. If it were just a small bone or finger, it wouldn't make much of a difference to his current fighting prowess. It's the skeletal frame of my entire upper body. Oh, I'm certain of it. It is definitely in the second of Sages. Vicious exclaimed excitedly. The skeletal frame of your entire upper body? Xavier's eyes widened in astonishment. Just by fusing with a few bones, he already wielded strength on par with Saint-level 7 experts. If he were to fuse with his entire upper body, would he not be able to defeat even Saint-level 9 experts easily? If Vicious were to wield such power, he would have more cards to deal with the Matthews clan if the situation fell through. Uh, that's right, Vicious replied. It seemed like even he didn't expect that a part of him would be sealed within the esteemed Sanctum of Sages. Can you sense the general direction of where it is? Xavier asked. As long as Vicious could identify the exact location of it, he would be able to make some preparations to retrieve it. Of course, that would also depend on whether the skeletal frame had its consciousness or not. If it did, the Vicious in the Book of Heaven's Path might just end up being assimilated into that Vicious instead. Keith Cole's will is simply too strong, so I can't sense its exact location anymore. Unless... At this point, Vicious hesitated for a moment before continuing. If lightning tribulation as large as the previous one occurs, it should be able to suppress that pesky aura temporarily, granting me sufficient time to determine the exact location of my skeletal frame. Due to the presence of Keith Cole's writing all over the place, and the several dozen millennia of respect and adulation from the student populace and elders, the entire Sanctum of Sages was permeated with his will and spirit, hindering Vicious's perception. Only during a lightning tribulation, when the will was busy vying with the inner demons contained within the ordeal, would it thin a little. 
another lightning tribulation as large as the previous one? Xavier shook his head. The only reason the previous dimension sundering ordeal had been so powerful was due to Elder Cecil's massive accumulation and the Netherworld Azure Dragon Beast and Divine Healer Siler striking the ordeal simultaneously. Otherwise, there was no way the lightning from a dimension sundering ordeal could cover over a million square feet. I'll find a way for that. Just make sure to find your skeletal frame when the time comes, Xavier instructed. It happened that he required lightning tribulations to replenish his strength and raise his cultivation, too. Since he could achieve both goals at once, he was more than willing to do it. Are they? Vicious replied before falling silent. As the both of them had communicated telepathically, the entire conversation only lasted roughly two breaths, before Xavier returned his attention to reality. In the next moment, he saw Divine Healer Siler staring at him in excitement, saying, Master Xavier, since you know so much about medicine, would you be interested in coming over to our physician guild to conduct a lecture? Conduct a lecture? That's right. It happens that our guild is currently studying a rather bizarre type of poison that we're still unable to remove even after twenty years of trying. Oh, we've invited many physicians all over on many occasions to discuss the issue, but uh, we remain completely helpless. If since you were able to resolve the boreal fire poison and fill the Cecil's body, but it is apparent that you are a person of great ability. If you could just conduct a lecture in our physician guild, I believe that you would be able to provide many fresh perspectives that might just allow us to resolve the poison, Divine Healer Siler exclaimed. Xavier was slightly hesitant. I am just an ordinary seven-star physician, not even reaching eight-star yet. If I conduct a lecture, there's bound to be many who would doubt my words. The fastest way to gain respect in any occupation was to show sufficient strength and proficiency in it. While Xavier had managed to resolve the boreal fire poison, he had relied heavily on the Library of Heaven's Path. He hadn't read any eight-star physician books yet, so his knowledge was still a little lacking to lecture in the Physician Guild. Oh, considering how you were able to see through Cecil's affliction with a single glance and resolve it so easily, I'll report this matter to headquarters and have an eight-star physician emblem applied for you this instant, Divine Healer Siler said with a smile. Their Physician Guild branch had studied the condition of his old friend for many years now, but they'd all been completely helpless before it. Just the fact that the young man was able to resolve it so easily bore testimony to his abilities. All right, then. However, I'll have to take a trip to your library just to brush up on my knowledge first, Xavier said with a nod. It would be good if Divine Healer Siler could apply for his emblem. He would be spared from taking the examination. That's simple. Follow me. Seeing that Xavier had agreed to his request, Divine Healer Siler heaved a sigh of relief. He quickly walked in front and led the way forward. Before leaving, Xavier turned to look at Cornelius and said, Oh, uh, is there anything else you wish to challenge me in? If there is, uh, you can feel free to look for me anytime you want. Cornelius's lips twitched uncontrollably, unable to say a word at all. When he challenged the other party to a duel of fighting prowess, he ended up being pummeled pitifully despite possessing superior cultivation. When he challenged the other party to a duel of impartation, Elder Cecil suddenly rushed in, crying for Xavier to take him in as his student. Somehow, Xavier suddenly felt like a towering mountain before him, one that he could not overcome or circumvent. While Xavier was following Divine Healer Siler to the Physician Guild Library, back in his residence, Roach was looking at the nearby Nathaniel with a look of bewilderment. They hadn't tagged along to watch Cornelius and Xavier's duel. Instead, they found some craftsmen to repair the collapsed main hall. Young Master Nathaniel, you said earlier that Cornelius and our young master are from the same lineage, Roach couldn't help but say. Could Cornelius be our old master's student too? He had heard the other party saying those words as soon as the young master walked in but he simply found the matter a little unbelievable. No matter how he looked at Cornelius, the latter just looked weak and dim-witted. Why would his old master take in a person of that caliber as his student? Indeed, Cornelius is Master K's student as well, 
Nathaniel nodded in admiration. If he could take Master K as his teacher as well, he would surely be regarded with the highest of esteem when he returned to the Matthews clan. He wouldn't just be an ordinary member of the side family without the slightest standing at all. Hearing Nathaniel's confirmation, Roach hesitantly asked, Do you know what our old master's master teacher rank is? All along, the old master's strength seemed to be growing along with the young master's cultivation, which made him suspect that the old master wasn't as powerful as he initially thought. Since Nathaniel was aware of the old master's true identity, this would be a good opportunity to ask about it. If the old master were really that powerful, he wouldn't have to lie low and keep himself humble anymore. At the very least, he wouldn't have to suffer the bad attitude from others when gathering intelligence in the Sanctum of Sages. I wasn't too aware of Master Kay's affairs previously, but after coming to know of Cornelius, I heard some of my clan members speaking of him. At this point, Nathaniel's eyes suddenly lit up. He had first heard of Master Kay when he was in the Sintran Empire, but due to the latter being too high-ranked, he had no idea what the significance of the name was. It was only upon arriving in the Sanctum of Sages and hearing others speak of Cornelius that he finally realized how high-standing and how great a power that man possessed. He's one of the Grand Elders of the Master Teacher Pavilion Headquarters, the man who wields the greatest power in the entire Master Teacher Pavilion, aside from the Pavilion Master himself. On top of that, he is a true nine-star Master Teacher, wielding unfathomable strength in his hand that's on par with even the old ancestor of our Matthews clan. He is renowned to be one of the strongest experts in the world. The man who wields the greatest power in the entire Master Teacher Pavilion other than the Pavilion Master himself is one of the strongest experts in the world. Roach's body trembled. In the past, he had thought that it would have been great if their old master was an eight-star master teacher. However, in the Sanctum of Sages, master teachers of such a rank were plentiful. As such, he had been forced to lie low and remain humble at all times. But who would have thought that the old master was such a formidable figure? One of the grand elders of the master teacher pavilion headquarters, a nine-star master teacher, and one of the strongest experts in the world. Just any one of those titles was sufficient to leave the entire Master Teacher continent trembling at its core. To think that a mere realtor of second-hand houses in the Olmec kingdom like him would catch the eye of such an incredible figure. At that moment, a feeling of pride grew in Roach's heart. Considering the unfathomable eye of discernment that nine star Master Teachers possess, the fact that I was able to catch the eye of the old master might mean that I possess great talent that even I'm unaware of. Roach widened his eyes in realization. All along he had thought he was an ordinary person, far lacking compared to the many geniuses of the world. However, after learning that the old master was such a formidable expert, he came to realize that he had to be a one-in-a-billion expert as well. Otherwise, why would a nine-star master teacher treat him so well and even entrust him with the heavy responsibility of taking care of his direct disciple? It's Master Xavier's fortune to have caught the eye of such a figure. But of course, I believe that Master K must have been delighted to take in a student like Master Xavier as well, Nathaniel remarked. While others might think that Xavier had to accrue several incarnations of luck to find a teacher like Master K, he knew very well that as long as the young man revealed his identity as a celestial master teacher, there would be no master teacher in the world who wouldn't be willing to take him in as their student. A moment later, Nathaniel suddenly recalled the other party's previous question and frowned in doubt. You aren't aware of Master Case's true identity, even though you're his butler. It was one thing for him not to know of Master Case's true identity but Roach was someone who had seen Master K on multiple occasions. So how could he possibly not know of the matter? Our old master is a humble and low-profile person, and he dislikes being in the public eye or, or talking about himself. As such, I, I'm not too sure about his affairs either, Roach replied. 
Oh, I see. I guess that's the attitude that master teachers should have, Nathaniel said with a meaningful nod. True master teachers should never allow their reputation to weigh down upon them, and clearly Master K was such a person. All right, the reparations for the residents are done. I still have some matters to attend to, so I'll be taking my leave first. Farewell. After chatting for a while longer, Nathaniel bade farewell before leaving. Watching as Nathaniel's figure disappeared into the distance, Roach thought about what they had discussed earlier, and a brilliant gleam twinkled in his eyes as he clenched his plump fists tight. Previously, when the young master tasked me with gathering some intelligence on the acquisition of Pinnacle Spirit Stones, I wasn't able to get the job done properly due to the hesitation and fear of facing those experts. However, now that I know of the old master's identity, why should I have any fear? <laughs> if anything, they should be the ones fearing me. Laughing heartily, Roach stood up from the chair, flung his sleeves, and began walking out of the room with widened strides. As the butler of the number one expert in the world, and a nine-star master teacher, his standing should at least be on par with the sanctum head of the sanctum of sages. Surely it would be nothing much for him to inquire about some information. Thus, he swiftly made his way over to the Hall of Integrity. On top of reinforcing one's mental fortitude and tempering one's character, the Hall of Integrity served as an information hub for important news. Most of the missions for the students of the Sanctum of Sages were allocated there. After taking a swift look around, Roach was soon standing in front of a vast hall, and with deep confidence, he strutted in. Seated in a corner of the room was a young man in his early twenties dressed in a black robe. He turned his gaze lazily toward Roach and said, Please take out your identity token. Roach flicked his wrist and handed over the token that Xavier had given him. A butler of a freshman. Upon taking a look at the token, the young man scoffed disdainfully before tossing the identity token back. Speak. What kind of information are you looking for? Is your young master looking for missions to participate in? From time to time, there would be young students who would purchase news concerning missions from him to complete. My young master isn't looking for missions to participate in. Roach shook his head. I'm here to ask where I can exchange for pinnacle spirit stones or equivalent spirit essences and pills here in the Sanctum of Sages. Pinnacle spirit stones? A frown surfaced on the forehead of the young man, and he waved his hand perfunctorily. I don't have much news here. You should return. You don't have much news here, Roach frowned. I have visited the other places in the Hall of Integrity, and all of them said that this is the only place with such news. How can you possibly not have such news? The reason he had headed there directly was because he had already gathered some news on the matter the previous time he was there. According to what the others said, this hall was the only place where one could exchange for pinnacle spirit stones. I told you, there's no such news here. Send our guest off. But just as the impatient young man was about to order the servants to drag this plump man out, an old man suddenly walked into the room. I need a pinnacle spirit stone to reinforce my cultivation. I'll have to trouble you to help me process the exchange. As he said those words, the old man took out a couple of rare ores and the hairs of saint beasts and passed them over. With just a look, Roach could tell that these were all good items. The hairs and claws of powerful saint beasts could be used to make weapons and armor far stronger than the typical ones forged by blacksmiths, thus making them exceptionally valuable. Elder, uh, please wait for a moment. Seemingly recognizing the identity of the elder, the young man hurriedly turned around and rushed into another room. Sometime later, he returned with a jade container in hand. Prying it open lightly, overwhelming spiritual energy immediately poured into the surroundings. A spirit stone emanating a blinding radiance came into sight. You have my thanks. After confirming that it was a pinnacle spirit stone, the old man took the jade container and placed it into his storage ring before leaving the room. At the other party's departure, a look of displeasure surfaced on Roach's face. 
Didn't you say that you have no news concerning Pinnacle Spirit Stones? Why did you process the old man's exchange straight away, then? That old man that you spoke of is Elder Keenan, an eight-star master teacher. Do you think that a mere freshman butler like you can be compared with him? Scram to the side. The young man scoffed as he waved his hand impatiently. What do you mean by that? Roach's face turned cold. I might be a freshman's butler, but it's not as if I'm asking you to give the Pinnacle Spirit Stone to me for free. As valuable as a Pinnacle Spirit Stone may be, yes. I am still able to afford it at the very least. Afford it? The young man sneered coldly. Are you even qualified to buy it? Pinnacle Spirit Stones are an extremely rare and limited resource in the Master Teacher Continent. Every single one of them expended means there's one less to go around. How in the world did a freshman's butler like you gain the notion that you're qualified to command such a valuable resource? How ludicrous. Due to the limited quantity of Pinnacle Spirit Stones, the Sanctum of Sages had a strict restriction on who was qualified to procure them. Those whose standing was beneath the requirement would not be able to exchange for one. This was also the reason it was not used as a currency even in the Sanctum of Sages. You are saying that I'm unqualified to purchase Pinnacle Spirit Stones from you? Roach's face darkened and his eyes narrowed threateningly. Were my words not clear enough, huh? Hurry up and scram or else I'll just have to find someone to toss you out, the young man bellowed impatiently. Toss me out? Roach flung his sleeves furiously, and the air of an inviolable existence drifted off him. Audacious! Do you know who I am? I don't give a damn who you are, the young man snapped. Get out of here right now, otherwise I'll have no choice but to pass a restriction order on you banning you from entering the Hall of Integrity for the rest of your life. Even the weakest butlers of top-notch powers would be at Saint Level 6 or Level 7 at the minimum. On top of dealing with miscellaneous affairs, they would be able to protect their master, too. On the other hand, the fellow before him wasn't even in the Saint Realm. Why was he talking such a big game? To use such a weak butler could only mean that the so-called young master was from a humble background, too. Yet, instead of feeling honored that he was willing to waste so many words on him, that plump man dared to speak to him so arrogantly. He didn't know what was best for him. You are saying that you want to pass a restriction order on me? Hearing those words, Roach was so furious that he started laughing. With a grand wave of his hand, he walked straight toward the main seat in the room and sat down. I'll sit down right here and wait for you to pass your restriction order. What are you waiting for? Hmm? Go on, I really will look down on you if you don't pass it today. You? <laughs> Not expecting the plump man to be so arrogant as to sit in his teacher's seat, the young man nearly erupted. Nevertheless, he still reined in his rage, and, with narrowed eyes, he asked sharply, Do you know what you're doing right now? Of course I do. Roach sneered coldly, with a voice filled with confidence. Rather, do you know who you're facing, speaking to me in such a manner? With a deep frown, the young man took a deep breath and asked lividly, who in the world are you? Given how the other party dared to act so arrogantly before him, there could be a chance that he might have a strong backing. Having been in the Sanctum of Sages for so long, he would never have survived through the years if he wasn't discerning enough to differentiate the real from the fake. Oh, you aren't worthy of knowing who I am. Forget the Elder managing your Hall of Integrity or the Deputy Sanctum head over here. Seated calmly, Roach waved his hand imposingly with the air of a person in authority, reminiscent of a conqueror grasping innumerable lives in his hands. 
Had he known that the old master was so formidable, he wouldn't have to lie so low. This was the kind of attitude that someone of his standing should be taking. Otherwise, he would only be an embarrassment to the old master. You want to speak to our elder or the deputy sanctum head directly? The young man's lips twitched upon hearing those words. There were various tiers for the teachers and elders in the Sanctum of Sages. Those at the bottommost level of the staff were the managerial elders. They were usually positions taken up by St. Level 7 experts, such as Elder Cecil, and they were in charge of resolving most miscellaneous affairs and overlooking the various examinations and trials in the Sanctum of Sages. Above that were the people in charge of the individual occupation branches in the Sanctum of Sages, such as Physician Siler. This group of people were usually St. Level 8 experts. On top of them were the five elders who governed the Hall of Attainment, Hall of Solidarity, Hall of Propriety, Hall of Erudition, and Hall of Integrity, such as Elder Hugo from the Hall of Propriety. Even the weakest of them possessed the might of half St. Level 9. As for the deputy sanctum head, he was even stronger than that, possessing a cultivation of St. Level 9. These figures were top-notch experts, whom he wouldn't even dare to breathe loudly before. Yet a butler, who hadn't even reached the St. Rome, was demanding that they appear before him as if commanding a subordinate. Was it just empty confidence? Or did he have something to back up his words? Indeed, my initial intention was to lie low and maintain a low profile. But since this is the attitude you wish to take with me, I demand to meet them here today. No matter what, they have to offer me an explanation as to why a mere subordinate like you dares to speak to me in such a manner. Roach uttered coldly. The more he spoke of the matter, the more furious he felt. In the face of the other party's imposing disposition, the young man was starting to doubt if the plump man seated before him had an esteemed identity or not. Just as he was at a loss as to what he should do, an old man suddenly walked in and his eyes immediately lit up. He quickly rushed forward and greeted, Teacher! The old man was his teacher, as well as the person in charge of the entire Hall of Integrity, Elder Herman. Seeing that someone was sitting in his seat, Elder Herman asked with a frown, what is going on? You are hurt. Before the young man could even respond, Roach had already spoken up with a face as cold as a winter's night. You sure have taught your student well. <laughs> what are you waiting for? Hurry up and offer your apologies to me. He had long heard of the person in charge of the Hall of Integrity, and he had seen the other party from afar once before. As such, he was able to recognize him with a single glance. Offer my apologies, Elder Herman frowned. A weak cultivator who hadn't even reached the saint realm was taking up his seat and even demanding that a half-saint level nine expert like him apologize. Was he hearing things? Where did this imbecile pop out from? Indeed, your student said that he would chase me out of the Hall of Integrity and even issue a restriction order against me. I never thought that I would hear something so insolent from the mouth of a junior. Apologizing is already the laxest punishment I can think of. Otherwise, I'm afraid I'll have to find someone to replace you as the head of the Hall of Integrity. Roach narrowed his eyes menacingly as he harumphed coldly. There are plenty of candidates in line to take over your position. Don't think that you're safe just because of the position you're in. Thanks me. Completely speechless by what he was hearing, Elder Herman turned to the young man beside him and asked, Who in the world is this imbecile? Just who did that plump man think he was? Not even the deputy sanctum head had the right to remove him on a whim to speak such arrogant words before him. Was he tired of living? Teacher, you don't know him either? The young man asked in surprise. He had thought that his teacher would surely know this person, given how knowledgeable he was. But who would have thought that his teacher would be at a complete loss as to what was happening as well? I took a look at his identity token earlier, and he's the butler of a freshman, the young man informed his teacher through gleam telepathy. 
She's the butler of the freshman. His face darkened. Were the butlers of the freshmen now all so arrogant? Demanding for him to apologize and even threatening to find someone to replace him. Is that is a problem with how I teach my student? The sanctum of sages will step in and correct me accordingly, so there's no need for you to worry about it. Rather, I would just like to ask, what right do you have to make a half-saint level nine expert like me apologize to you? Elder Herman asked with a hint of displeasure in his voice. As a high-ranked master teacher, even though he was deeply infuriated by Roach's insolence, he was still able to suppress his emotions and maintain his composure. Otherwise, he surely would have sent a slap right over to the other party. How could he possibly allow such a weak fellow to spout this bunch of nonsense before him? What right do I have? Roach stood up and placed his hands behind his back. He slowly took a step at a time toward Elder Herman with a lofty air surrounding him. Since you have asked such a question, fine. I'll fulfill your curiosity. My young master is a student from the latest batch of freshmen, Xavier. Xavier? Elder Herman frowned. Even though Xavier had caused a huge commotion in the other halls, his reputation hadn't reached the Hall of Integrity yet. That's right. Well, you might not have heard much about my young master, but I believe that the name of my old master should strike a chord in your mind. Harumphing coldly, Roach tilted his chin upward with a proud look on his face. The Master Teacher Pavilion Headquarters, Master Mr. K, you are Master K's father. Elder Herman was stunned for an instant before his face abruptly warped in shock. As the number one grand elder in the Master Teacher Pavilion headquarters, it went without saying that he had heard rumors about the other party. But who would have thought that this plump man standing before him would be that legendary man's butler? It was no wonder the other party was so arrogant and haughty. If he was truly the butler of the man who stood at the very peak of the Master Teacher continent, then he had the right to speak to him in such a manner. Indeed, a hint of majesty could be seen on Roach's plump face as he took another step forward. After the initial shock, Elder Herman grimly questioned, Master K's whereabouts have been a mystery to even the Master Teacher Pavilion headquarters. You claim that you are his butler, but do you have any evidence to prove that? Even if he was willing to believe the plump man's words, it simply didn't make sense for Master K to take in such a weak butler. A powerful general had no feeble soldiers under his command. For a person who wasn't even in the Saint Realm to claim that he was Master K's butler, this was simply too much of a stretch to be true. Ancient sage Coulson was Keith Cole's servant as well, but he still managed to reach an unparalleled level of strength in the world. To take in such a person as his butler would be like a smudge on Master K's name. After all, if Master K wanted a butler, not even nine-star master teachers would turn him down. Why would he choose a weakling who hadn't even reached the Saint Realm yet? Not to mention, just by what he had seen so far, the other party was a dim-witted and crude individual. However, he could sense that the other party meant the words that he said. All of his vitals showed that he wasn't lying, and this was exactly what left Elder Herman feeling rather perplexed. Odd basis! With a livid face, Roach bellowed furiously. Are you doubting my words, or are you doubting my old master's judgment? I wouldn't dare to doubt Mr. K's judgment. Elder Herman shook his head. However, as the butler of a nine-star master teacher, he should have imprinted his blessing within you. If it is convenient for you, I hope that you will allow me a look. Once I verify your blessing, I will have my student apologize to you immediately. Otherwise, I will have no choice but to hold you liable for impersonating the butler of a nine-star master teacher and publicly humiliating the head of the Hall of Integrity. Once this affair of these two sentences 
warrant the death penalty. Considering that the Sanctum of Sages was a subsidiary power of the Master Teacher Pavilion, naturally Elder Herman dared not doubt the judgment of a Grand Elder from headquarters. But so far, they had only heard empty claims from the plump man before them, so naturally he held some reservations for the matter. For a fellow whom even he would snub to be taken in as Master K's butler, this simply sounded too ridiculous to be true. Blessing. Roach was slightly startled to hear that word. He had met the old master on many occasions, but he had never heard of such a thing before. Just a search of gleam from someone of Mr. K's prowess can bring unimaginable benefits and strength to an individual. If you are truly his butler, he will have left a will or something similar within you. Otherwise, you could be killed very easily by enemies, given your cultivation realm. And that would make it extremely difficult for you to work for him. Don't you agree? Elder Herman explained. Since the butler was working for the master teacher, it was only natural for the master teacher to offer some degree of protection to the butler. Under normal circumstances, the subordinates of high-ranked master teachers would have some kind of blessing infused into them to ensure that their lives wouldn't be threatened when facing an enemy. If the plump man before him was truly Master K's butler, he was bound to have a blessing or something similar within him. Otherwise, it would reflect poorly on Master K if his butler was killed. I, of course, my old master has bestowed upon me his blessing. Roach was trembling fearfully on the inside, but on the surface, he continued putting up a brave front and harumph furiously. Just that how can I possibly show his blessing to anyone else so easily? What if I scare you out of your wits? As far as he knew, the old master hadn't imprinted a blessing on him before. But it was already too late for him to back down. Thus, he could only thicken his skin and push his way forward. In any case, as long as he refused to take out the blessing, the other party shouldn't be able to do anything about it. That don't worry. It will all be good as long as you have Mr. K's blessing. There's no need for you to take his boot, Elder Herman replied with a smile. A master teacher of Mr. K's caliber can instill instinctive deference from other ordinary master teachers. As long as you follow me to the teacher acknowledgement hall, we'll be able to discern if your words are true via the reflection of a uh, unique formation. Teacher acknowledgement hall? Roach's face twitched slightly upon hearing those words. Even though he wasn't a master teacher, he had been to all kinds of master teacher pavilions during his time with Xavier. He knew the significance of the teacher acknowledgement hall to master teachers and that the will of countless predecessors resided there. No trickery nor falsehood would be able to escape their eyes. The fact that he didn't have the old master's blessing would be exposed in an instant if they headed there. Don't you think it's deeply disrespectful to trouble the wills of the predecessors over something as trivial as this? My old master has always preached that a person should always rely on themselves as far as possible to not trouble others unnecessarily, Roach replied haughtily. The days he had spent as a realtor back in the Olmec kingdom had allowed him to refine his art of lying. Oh, it is not a trivial matter at all. This matter concerns the honor of a nine-star master teacher, so we must take it with utmost seriousness. Otherwise, I will have to report this matter to the master teacher pavilion headquarters and have them send an envoy to verify the matter. That truly would be troubling others. Elder Herman replied earnestly. The other party's firm confidence had left him a little doubtful earlier, but with the other party insistently refusing to verify his identity, he was starting to be more and more convinced that the other party was a fake. Without bothering to give Roach any opportunity to argue, Elder Herman turned around and instructed, Escort Master Case Butler to the teacher acknowledgement hall. Yes, the young man replied. He stepped forward and a burst of energy surged from his palm and wrapped around Roach like iron chains, rendering the latter completely immobile. As one who hadn't even reached the St. Rome yet, his strength was nothing compared to the St. Level 5 young man. Butler Roach, this way, please, the young man gestured forward with a smile. 
are you? Not expecting to be treated in such a manner, Roach's face reddened in rage. How dare you, the butler of a grand elder of the master teacher of every in headquarters? Will have you be able to bear the consequences once my old master learns of the matter? Bind? Oh, we would not dare bind a person as esteemed as you. All we are doing is inviting you over to the teacher acknowledgement hall to verify your identity. As Mr. Case Butler, you should be then aware of how important lineages are to master teachers. So even if Mr. K does learn of this matter, he will agree with our actions. Elder Herman said as he walked out of the room. The young man quickly followed behind while dragging Roach along with him. Not too long later, they arrived before a vast hall. Within the hall was a massive altar filled with innumerable tablets. These had been left behind by the generations of outstanding predecessors of the Sanctum of Sages. Erected at the very center of the room was Keith Cole's sculpture, and he was looking at the sky with eyes filled with compassion for the entire world. By the side of the hall, there was a row of smaller sculptures. The sculpture at the very forefront of the row was an old man whose eyes were tightly shut. He was the founder of the Sanctum of Sages, ancient sage Kirin. To the right of him was sage Giovanni, after which was the second sanctum head, the third sanctum head, and so on. The sculptures of these sanctum heads were significantly shorter than Keith Cole's, and it seemed as if they were listening to his teaching, comprehending the true nature of the world. We have arrived at the teacher acknowledgement hall. If you do possess the blessing of Master K, we should be able to tell easily here, Elder Herman said with a smile before waving his hand grandly. Many rays of light shot forth from the tablets and the sculptures and fell upon Roach, embracing his body. It seemed like they were trying to detect the presence of any blessing within him. A moment later, the light shrouding Roach dissipated into the surroundings. You have no blessing imprinted on you at all. As expected, you've been lying all this time, the young man bellowed in agitation. Puppers, how can you even think of impassionate in Mr. Case? You must be tired of... Elder Herman glanced at Roach with eyes that looked ready to kill. But before Elder Herman could finish his words, a resounding explosion suddenly echoed in the hall. One of the tablets had exploded. Following this, the other tablets swiftly followed suit, as if fearing that it would be considered an act of disrespect if they were to detonate themselves late. In just the blink of an eye, the room was filled with wooden shavings. The jaws of both Elder Herman and the young man fell to the ground, completely flabbergasted by what they were seeing. If Master K's blessing was imprinted within Roach's body, all of the predecessors whose strength was beneath Master K's when they left behind their will would fall as a sign of respect to him. Based on what they knew of Master K's strength, there weren't too many predecessors in the Sanctum of Sages who would be a match for him. If Roach was truly Master K's butler, they estimated that roughly half of the tablets would fall, leaving behind just a few incredible experts and the Sanctum Heads. But instead of falling, they ended up exploding. What the heck was going on? Elder Herman anxiously looked at the altar of tablets before him, but as if meeting with some kind of supernatural occurrence, they were exploding one after another with increasing frequency. In just a few breaths, they had all already been reduced to wooden shavings, with none surviving the ordeal. Oh, it is fortunate that the sculptures of the sanctum heads are still intact. Elder Herman heaved a sigh of relief. It was already bad enough for the tablets to be destroyed under his watch, so if anything had happened to Sage Giovanni and the other sculptures as well, he really would have been in deep trouble. But before he could finish his words, cracks began creeping across the sculpture of the ninth sanctum head, growing more and more numerous. A second later, it was nothing more than a pile of rubble on the ground. And like a contagious disease, the same symptoms struck the eighth sanctum head, followed by the seventh sanctum head, then the sixth. Even ancient sage Kirin was not spared from this mysterious malady and split in two, leaving behind Keith Cole standing silently on the spot. 
At this point, Elder Herman and the young man's minds had gone completely blank. The sanctum head of each generation was an astounding genius, be it in terms of their fighting prowess or eye of discernment. They wouldn't pale in comparison even against the grand elders of the Master Teacher Pavilion. This was even more so for ancient sage Kieran. As one of Keith Cole's direct disciples, he had achieved a level of cultivation that not a single generation of deputy pavilion masters of the Master Teacher Pavilion headquarters was able to match up to. So, why would they shatter all of a sudden while in the midst of recognizing Master K? Just when in the world did Master K reach such a level of power? If that was the case, as an elder of the Sanctum of Sages, Elder Herman should have heard of the joyous news by now. Those two were not the only ones who were taken aback by the happenings. Even the perpetrator of the entire affair, Roach, was completely dumbstruck as well. He had thought that he would be exposed this time around, but who could have known that this would happen instead? While the old master had never imprinted a blessing on him, the young master did infuse several surges of gleam into his body before, saying that it would protect him in times of danger. It was out of a moment of desperation that he tried driving them earlier, but who would have thought that it would lead to the tablets exploding instead? It was as if they had met a being who they dared not oppose. The whole debacle was too bizarre. Phew. Just as Roach was deep in thought, he saw Elder Herman looking at him with a speechless expression. Do you believe that I'm Master K's butler now? Seeing that he was finally out of danger, Roach heaved a sigh of relief while glancing down at Elder Herman imposingly, as if everything had been under his control all this while. Elder Herman was just about to nod when another resounding creak filled the room, and the next instant, Keith Cole's sculpture placed his hands together and bowed deeply, seemingly greeting a peer. Following this, cracks began to appear on Keith Cole's sculpture as well, and it took just a few moments for it to explode into smithereens. And just as everyone thought that the worst was over, the entire teacher acknowledgement hall suddenly began shaking nonstop, and the roof began plummeting down on them one chunk at a time. In less than two breaths, the majestic building collapsed inward, becoming nothing more than a pile of rubble. Just what in the world is going on? Elder Herman and the young man looked at one another with frenzied expressions. They had been planning to bring that fellow over to verify if he had Master K's blessing imprinted on him or not. But who could have known that the entire teacher acknowledgement hall would end up collapsing instead? The teacher acknowledgement hall was a place where the wills of the predecessors were stored. Even if the otherworldly demonic tribe managed to destroy every single hall in the Sanctum of Sages, it would still be nearly impossible for them to tear down the teacher acknowledgement hall. Yet, the impregnable fortress was reduced to such a state. What happened? Barely after diving out of the rubble, they heard a voice in the sky. Looking up, they saw various silhouettes rushing over in their direction. The one taking the lead was an old man, and upon seeing the current state of the teacher acknowledgement hall, his lips began twitching uncontrollably, seemingly unable to believe what he was seeing. He was the incumbent deputy sanctum head of the Sanctum of Sages, Henry Tigall. Mr. Henry! Seeing that the deputy sanctum head had come down personally, Elder Herman hurriedly clasped his fist and explained everything that had happened in detail. While verifying the presence of a blessing, the tablets all shattered, and Keith Cole placed his hands together and bowed deeply. Upon hearing the story from Elder Herman, Master Henry and the other elders in the sky looked at one another with shocked expressions. For Keith Cole to bow to another man as his peer? What a joke! Who in the world could be worthy of having the world's teacher bow down to them as a peer? What I am saying is the absolute truth. If you do not believe me, you can have him try it again once the teacher acknowledgement hall is fixed. Elder Herman exclaimed in agitation, seeing the doubt in the other's eyes. The teacher acknowledgement hall harnesses the will of many predecessors. It'll take at least half a year to restore it to its previous state. 
Master Henry shook his head and frowned. Why don't we do this instead? We shall temporarily seal our cultivation and use our perceiving methods to examine Butler Roach's condition to determine what's going on. Their strength was already no weaker than their predecessors, so they could use the same means to determine if there was truly a blessing in Roach or not. At the same time, they would be able to find out what had happened earlier as well. Sounds good, Elder Herman nodded. Let's begin, then, Master Henry instructed. The various elders quickly surrounded Roach, and with a flick of their wrist, a ray of light burst forth from their hands. Just like before, the light congregated on Roach, forming a sphere of light around him. Oh, they really won't learn, will they? Seeing that the crowd was still insisting on examining him, Roach shook his head helplessly. He drove the gleam that the young master had infused into his body before turning to look at one of the elders. A slight jolt sounded, and the elder abruptly plummeted from the sky before lying in a daze on the ground, as if having encountered something terrifying. Then, Roach turned his gaze to another one of the elders. That elder plummeted from the sky, too. Scratching his head, Roach turned to the third elder. Wherever Roach's eyes fell, the elder in that direction would suddenly lose control of their strength and plummet to the ground. In just the blink of an eye, only Master Henry was left in the sky. Ew. Watching as Roach slowly turned his head around, Master Henry couldn't help but shudder in fear. Just as he was about to speak, he suddenly saw a towering figure appearing right before his eyes. That figure was so big that he seemed to cover the entire world. Or perhaps he was the world itself, a manifestation of the authority of the heavens. A jolt struck Master Henry's heart, and he suddenly found his gleam slowing to a halt. Just like that, he plummeted from the sky as well and struck the ground head first. Watching as the deputy sanctum head and other elders fell from the sky, Elder Herman's eyes nearly bulged out of their sockets. His teeth clattered together in fear as he looked at the fat silhouette before him with a hint of apprehension in his eyes. The young master's gleam is so useful. <laughs> While the crowd was overwhelmed by shock and fear, Roach was reveling in his newfound ability. He excitedly drove the gleam that the young master had infused into his body and swept his gaze across the crowd once more. In response, Master Henry and the others convulsed on the spot. Another sweeping gaze, and they convulsed on the spot once more. Roach couldn't help but find the situation deeply interesting. It was some time later before Roach reluctantly came to a halt. It was not that he didn't want to continue playing with the various master teachers, but the gleam that the young master had left in his body was limited in the first place. He couldn't just waste it on trivial playing. He had to keep some of it for times of danger as well. With Roach ceasing to abuse the Heaven's Path gleam, Master Henry and the others finally managed to rise back into the sky. They instinctively turned their gazes toward the plump man beneath them. Fear and shock could be seen reflected in the depths of their eyes. The detection method required them to seal their cultivation so they could better sense the presence of a master teacher's aura with their senses. Under normal circumstances, as long as the person who had left behind the blessing wasn't that much stronger than them, they would only feel a surge of respect and admiration for the individual. What had happened earlier, the loss of ability to move their bodies, should have been impossible. There had never been such an incident of something like that happening before. But, the impossible had come true this time. One of the elders cowered back fearfully before turning his gaze over to the others and asked, What did you all see? I saw the silhouettes that towered even against the sky, and the existence that seemed to encompass the entire world. It was almost as if that figure was the heavens themselves, an elder said. That's exactly what I saw too. Could it be that Master Kay's already achieved that level of strength. The crowd gulped before they gasped in shock. Just what kind of realm had Master Kay reached for the blessing he imprinted to harness such astounding power? 
Master K has close ties with the old ancestors of the three sage clans, especially the Matthews and Natalie clan. He was the witness to the betrothal of the young prodigy and the princess. He surpassed Saint Level 9 many years ago, reaching an unfathomable level in his cultivation. Furthermore, he possesses exceptional sensitivity towards souls and bloodlines, such that it would be no exaggeration to say that he is the number one expert in that field in the world, Master Henry said. Other than him, I can think of no one else who wields the power to reduce the teacher acknowledgement hall to such a state and render every single one of us completely powerless. While most elders in the Sanctum of Sages might not know much about the elusive Grand Elder of the Master Teacher Pavilion headquarters, as the Deputy Sanctum Head, Master Henry still knew a thing or two. And honestly, other than that legendary man, he couldn't think of anyone else who could make them plummet completely helplessly from the sky with just his aura. Does this mean that he is Mr. K's blood? Elder Herman's body stiffened. That is most likely the case, Master Henry nodded. Then he turned to Elder Herman and berated him in displeasure. As Master Case Butler, it's natural for Butler Roach to put on airs, or else what would become of the strict hierarchy of order among Master Teachers? If you doubted him and forcefully dragged him over to the Teacher Acknowledgement Hall to verify his identity, it's no wonder he's unhappy and reduced the entire place to such a state. Elder Herman, this is a mess that you have caused. So you'd better put some thought into how you intend to resolve it. Would anyone in their right mind dare impersonate Master K's butler? Considering the heavy price one would have to pay one's cost, no sane person would attempt to impersonate Master K's butler. Yet, he just had to doubt Butler Roach. Yes. Elder Herman nodded with a bitter smile on his face. Gritting his teeth, he slowly walked toward Roach, but before he could say a word, the latter had already put his hands behind his back once more and questioned with a haughty look on his face. So, have you verified my identity? Of course, of course, Elder Herman quickly nodded. <laughs> Your student tried to throw me out of the Hall of Integrity and pass a restriction order on me. And you forcefully brought me to the teacher acknowledgement hall to verify my identity. How do you think we should resolve this matter? Roach asked with an authoritative tone. It was fortunate that the young master had left a surge of gleam in his body, or else things would have gotten awkward. Of course, the young master's gleam couldn't be so formidable by itself. In his view, the old master must have left behind some kind of means within him that even he was oblivious to. But thinking over the matter once more, despite being a butler of the number one figure on the master teacher continent, he'd been messed around by a minor figure like this. The more he thought about it, the more infuriated he became. Master Henry quickly stepped in and intervened. Butler Roach, Elder Herman, was just ignorant of your identity, so... If you could be so kind as to... I told him who my old master was, but he chose to doubt my words instead. I wrote, have traveled here step by step from the Olmec kingdom, and I have braved countless storms. But this is the first time I have seen someone that conceited, Roach sneered coldly. If everyone were to behave in such a manner, what would become of Master K's authority? What would become of the Master Teacher Pavilion's authority? Master Henry frowned. While humility was celebrated among master teachers, there was still a need to regard the leaders of mankind with respect as to not undermine their authority. If everyone disregarded the authority of those in power, it would be hard for the leaders of mankind to rally the populace together to fight against the otherworldly demonic tribe. Knowing that he was at fault for this instant, Elder Herman clenched his fists tightly and stepped forward. Butler Roach, feel free to say what you want me to do. As long as it is within my means, consider it done. You are a master teacher, whereas I am just a butler. I don't have the right to issue any punishment to you. Roach shot a glance at Elder Herman. There was a short pause before he waved his hand and continued. However, 
if you wish to make reparations, it just so happens that our young master is in dire need of finical spirit stones. If you can bring some over, I think we can let this matter rest. Don't worry, I will pay an equivalent price for the exchange. It is not my habit to blackmail or coerce others into things. Having followed Xavier for quite some time, as he came into contact with higher-ranked master teachers, he began to gain a deep understanding of the rules concerning master teachers. It was true that even eight-star master teachers would have to show him respect out of deference to the old master. But ultimately, he still wasn't a master teacher, so he wasn't qualified to pass judgment upon them. It would be a breach of etiquette. Was that a simple or oh, considerate done? Hearing that the other party just wanted to exchange for pinnacle spirit stones, Elder Herman immediately heaved a sigh of relief. He flicked his wrist, and a jade container materialized in his hand. Here are five pinnacle spirit stones. If please, consider them an apology for my undeserving disciples' insolent actions. If you wish to make any further exchange for pinnacle spirit stones, feel free to look for me. As long as it is not beyond fifty pinnacle spirit stones, I should be able to sort it out for you. You are a wise man, Roach nodded with a pleased smile on his face as he accepted the jade container. The very purpose of his visit was to acquire pinnacle spirit stones, and not only did he gain five of them for free, but he was even given the right to exchange for them whenever. This outcome was one that he was extremely content with. At the same time, he couldn't help but think how convenient it was when there was someone above that he could rely on. Had these master teachers not found the old master's blessing in him, putting aside earning these pinnacle spirit stones, he might not even have been allowed to walk out of there alive. Seeing that the conflict was resolved, Master Henry stepped forward and asked with a smile, Butler Roach, if I may, what level of cultivation has Master K reached, and where is he at the moment? The imposing figure that he had seen earlier was simply too frightening, such that his heart was still beating in trepidation. Could Master K have crossed that bottleneck and achieved that unfathomable realm? Our old master has always been a rather elusive figure, and even I don't have any means of contacting him. Usually, he's the one who looks for me instead. I'm also not too sure about the specifics regarding how powerful he is either, but I do know that the strength he wields has reached a level far beyond anyone's gauge, such that it is no exaggeration to say that he is unrivaled in this world. When speaking of Master K, a brilliant gleam lit up in Roach's eye and his voice grew conspicuously agitated. Despite his overwhelming strength, the old master remained amiable and compassionate, and this left him deeply in awe. Master K is truly a person worthy of respect, Master Henry nodded. Just as he was about to continue speaking, an elder suddenly rushed up to him with a bizarre look on his face. Master Henry, someone is looking for you outside. Looking for me? Master Henry frowned. Who is it? As the deputy sanctum head of the Sanctum of Sages, a saint level nine expert, he was not a figure that just anyone could meet. The elder shot a glance at Roach, and his lips twitched slightly. Then, with a slightly awkward tone, he said, Ed, A person who, who, who means that he is Master K's butler. Master K's but Which Master K? Master Henry was stunned by the elder's report. It's Master Xavier K, the elder replied. Master Henry froze on the spot. They had finally recognized the plump man standing before them as Master K's butler when another one popped up all of a sudden. Was this some kind of elaborate prank? When did the position of Master K's butler become so worthless that one could be found at every turn? What's going on? Master Henry sent a telepathic message privately to the elder. I have no idea. My student sent me the message. 
At which the elder paused for a moment before continuing. Furthermore, it, it seems like the person is someone whom you are acquainted with. Someone whom I'm acquainted with. Master Henry was bewildered by those words. While he had heard of many affairs surrounding Master K, most were concerning official matters instead of his private life. On top of that, he hadn't had the honor of meeting him in person. Thus, he wasn't familiar with his relations. For example, he hadn't even heard of Butler Roach before this matter, so it was perplexing to him that another one of Master K's butlers would pop up all of a sudden, claiming that he was acquainted with him. That's right. Do you still remember Julian Yates? The elder replied telepathically. You're speaking of the Thousand Hands Poison Monarch, Julian Yates. Master Henry tightened his fists upon hearing that name. That's right. It's him. The elder nodded grimly. The top echelon of the Poison Hall headquarters is classified by the two guardians, four eminences, twelve Poison Kings, and seventy-two Tier One Hallmasters. As the left guardian of the Poison Hall, Julian is known for his exceptional mastery of poison. Recalling the history surrounding Julian, an involuntary shudder ran through Master Henry's body. It's said that his mastery of poison has already reached a level so high that he could even plant poison within an embryo through the mother's body without harming either of the two, cursing the child to a life of suffering. The poisons that he concocts are so potent that even nine-star physicians would find themselves completely helpless before them. Indeed, there was a period when he wreaked havoc on the Master Teacher continent, poisoning every single person that he came by. Eventually, the Master Teacher Pavilion headquarters were forced to dispatch their forces to surround and take him down. Well, if I recall correctly, Master Henry, you were involved in that operation back then, right? The Elder asked. That's right, I did participate in that operation, combining the forces dispatched by the Master Teacher Pavilion Headquarters, the Sanctum of Sages, and the Combat Master Hall. There were a total of nine St. Level 9 experts in total. We managed to corner him in an ancient city, and we set up an unbreachable trap to force him to surrender. Yet who could have thought that that fellow would manage to forcefully break out of our trap through the sheer potency of his poison? Six of the St. Level Nine experts died on the spot, and it's only by a stroke of luck that I managed to survive the ordeal. As Master Henry recalled the affairs that had happened back then, hostility rippled in his eyes, and he seemed to grow slightly agitated. It is due to that lethal poison that my cultivation hasn't progressed at all for the past twenty years, stagnating at St. Level Nine primary stage. After that matter, the Master Teacher Pavilion Headquarters organized a couple more operations, but the cunning Julian managed to get away each time. However, all news surrounding him abruptly stopped two months afterwards, and he's not been seen since then. There are rumors saying that he encountered Master K, and the latter subdued him and made him his subordinate, the Elder said. Due to the vast implications of the matter, the operations conducted over the past two decades had been kept confidential among the top brass of the Master Teacher Pavilion. As such, those who hadn't participated in those operations would never know of these matters. Yes, I've heard of that rumor too. No matter how powerful Julian is, there's no way he would stand a chance against the powerful Master K. If that man who's requesting to meet me is Julian, then there might just be some credibility to the rumors, Master Henry said. While he harbored deep anger toward Julian, if it was true that the latter had become Master K's subordinate, he would have no choice but to forsake all thoughts of exacting vengeance. It was true that the Thousand Hands Poison Monarch had erred greatly in the past. But if Master K could guarantee that the other party would use his powers to contribute to mankind in the future, that would surely be preferable to killing the other party. After all, St. Level 9 experts were not easy to come by, and mankind needed all the strength it could get to deal with the otherworldly demonic tribe. 
The rumor that Master K subdued Julian had spread like wildfire at one point in time. But there had been no concrete evidence then to determine the authenticity of the rumor. As such, they could only take the matter with a grain of salt. But who would have thought that it would be real? Oh, you're right. The elder hesitated for a moment before asking. Should we invite him in? Since he's Master K's butler as well, he should be acquainted with Butler Roach over here. It would be good to allow them to interact with one another. And perhaps we might be able to determine the cause of the peculiar situation earlier, Master Henry said. Only someone as powerful as Master K could have the strength to possibly make the vicious Julian bow in submission. If the person requesting an audience with him was truly Julian, there should be little doubt that he was Master K's butler. After all, why would someone as esteemed as the left guardian of the poison hall claim that he was the butler of a master teacher? That would only be lowering his standing. Considering how the plump man was Master K's butler as well, there was a good chance that the both of them knew one another. All right, the elder nodded before leaving the room. Sometime later, he returned with a gray-robed elder behind him. This elder had particularly thick eyebrows, and there was a gloomy tone to his eyes, making it hard for one to read his emotions. His true cultivation was buried deep within his body, making it impossible to accurately gauge his strength. However, based on what Master Henry had said, he was likely to be a Saint Level 9 expert at the very minimum. Julian walked right up to Master Henry and said with a slight smile, Henry, we meet once more. Indeed, we meet once more, Master Henry said with narrowed eyes as he tried his best to suppress his fury. Oh, you need not get so angry. I was the left guardian of the button hall back then, so it is a given that we would attempt to kill one another. But since I have become Master K's butler, we can be considered allies standing on the same front row. There is no reason for you to view me with hostility, Julian said. Indeed. There is no reason for that anymore. Master Henry shook his head. May I know the reason behind your visit? If there's nothing much, why don't I show you the way out? Don't be so quick to send me off. Oh, why don't you take a look at these first? Uh, perhaps it uh, might change your mind. Julian flicked his finger and a jade bottle flew over. Master Henry casually grabbed the jade bottle and pried it open. A moment later, his eyes narrowed. Is this the antidote to the poison in my body? Ever since becoming afflicted with the poison from the other party 20 years ago, he had sought out countless physicians, but none of them had been able to do anything about it. As a result, he'd been unable to advance his cultivation. It was exactly for this reason that he was filled with rage for the other party. Yet who would have thought that the other party would deliver the antidote right to him? Indeed, my master wishes me to cure all of those whom I have poisoned over the years. Even though the poison you were afflicted with wasn't too severe, it still must have caused you quite some suffering over the years. Thus, I hope to make it up to you, one way or another. Julian explained. Help me relay my thanks to Master K. With Master Henry's eye of discernment, he was able to tell whether the antidote was real or not with just a single glance and he could hardly control his excitement with the cure to his long-term affliction right in his hands. He hurriedly placed it into his storage ring before recalling the other matter he had in mind, so he gestured to Roach and said, Right, why don't I uh, introduce the both of you to one another? This gentleman over here is Master K's butler, Roach. Butler Roach, this elder over here is Julian, Master K's butler. Yeah, well, I... Guess the both of you should be acquainted with one another, right? Master Case but Julian frowned in doubt. I am the only but that Master K has. How could there be another but? On the other hand, Roach's eyebrow shot up upon hearing those words, and displeasure surfaced on his face. You said that he's the old master's butler too? <laughs> you must be joking with me after which he turned his sights to Julian and bellowed, Preposterous! How dare you impersonate the old master's butler? Men, take him down.
A wave of silence swept across the room. The teeth of every single elder in the room were clattering, and they stared at Roach as if they were looking at a monster. The gray-robed elder wielded strength that even Master Henry couldn't reach. And yet, that plump man said that the other party was preposterous and even commanded others to take him down. On the other hand, Julian was taken aback for a moment before his eyes narrowed. What did you say? He had been following Master K for more than 20 years now, and he knew very well whether the latter had more butlers and subordinates or not. He was the one who dealt with almost all of the miscellaneous matters, and it was one thing for him to have never met the plump man standing before him, but to think that the other party would dare speak to him in such a manner. Are you deaf? Didn't you hear what I said? Roach waved his hand in impatience. Speak! What is your motive for pretending to be the old master's butler? You might have been able to get away with it if you did it elsewhere, but it seems that you have lucked out. Never thought that you would meet me, Master K's real butler. <laughs> real butler? Sensing the complete lack of nervousness within Roach while saying those words, Julian couldn't help but turn his gaze to Master Henry. Henry, who is this fellow? You don't know one another. Master Henry's lips twitched. He had thought that as fellow butlers of Master K, the both of them should have been acquainted with one another. Yet who could have thought that a meeting between them would end up so tense instead? It was not only the case that the both of them hadn't met one another, it was more like they didn't even know of each other's existence. This almost felt like a wife meeting the mistress for the first time. Am I supposed to know every insignificant person out there in the world? Julian flung his sleeves coldly. His master was one of the strongest experts on the master teacher continent, and even the weakest cultivator in his social circle was at Saint Level 9 at minimum. Given so, how could his master possibly take a fellow who wasn't even in the Saint Realm yet as his butler? He claims to be Master K's butler and we validated his identity through the teacher acknowledgement hall earlier. Master K has indeed imprinted his blessing on him, Master Henry explained. The person who had imprinted a blessing onto Roach was an expert far stronger than their imaginations. Other than Master K, they could think of no other person who was powerful enough for that. He possesses my master's blessing. Julian was taken aback by those words. He turned his gaze toward the plump man by the side once more, and deep creases slowly etched onto his forehead. My master is a person who values peace and quiet, such that he has only taken in a single student to date. Given that, how could he possibly take you in as his butt? Explain. Even if Master K wanted to take in a butler, he would at least take in someone much more qualified. There was simply no reason he would take in a person as weak as the plump man before him as his butler. Oh, Finches, how dare you question our old master's judgment? Naturally, he has his considerations for making his decisions. Or could it be that you feel that our old master is accountable to you for every decision that he makes? Roach waved his hand and harumphed coldly. He turned around and sat back down on the main seat in the room before continuing. There's no point wasting any more time here. Hurry up and confess your identity and the reason you're impersonating our old master's butt. What the heck was this? How in the world could a fake like the other party possibly have the courage to stand before him without the slightest hint of fear? Not to mention, to even be putting on such an act in the sanctum of sages. His audacity was truly incredible. Impersonating? Julian nearly exploded on the spot. Do you know who I am? Had it been in the past, he definitely would have poisoned the other party to death for daring to conduct himself so arrogantly before him. As the left guardian of the poison hall, possibly the top poison practitioner in the world, how could he allow another man to insult him in such a manner? Do I look like I give a damn as to who you are? Roach replied with a deeply annoyed tone. Rather, do you know who I am? 
Our old master is one of the grand elders of the Master Teacher Pavilion headquarters, and very possibly the strongest expert in the world. As his butler, I have the responsibility to uphold his dignity and standing. Yet, a mere impersonator like you dares to question me in such a manner. I hate to say this, but are you tired of living? Even though Julian was on the verge of erupting, he still suppressed his rage and harumphed. You claim that Master K is your master, but do you have any evidence of it? After years of listening to Master K's teachings, his temper had cooled significantly. Had anyone dared to speak to him in such a manner in the past, he would have flipped the entire sanctum of sages upside down. Evidence? <laughs> Henry has already verified it earlier. The old master's blessing is right within me. Instead of speaking of me, why don't you take a look at yourself instead? Hmm? Do you have any evidence to prove your identity? Who doesn't know how to make empty claims? Why don't you show some evidence first before pointing your finger at others? Roach sneered coldly. He had used the young master's gleam to clear the identity examination. But given that the young master was the old master's direct disciple, that could also be considered a method of the old master. So it wasn't entirely inaccurate to say that he possessed Master K's blessing. You. Unwilling to waste his breath on futile explanations, Julian flicked his wrist and whipped out a token. This is the token that my master has given to me. Token. Master Henry and the others quickly turned their gazes over, and very soon they nodded in approval. That is a token specially crafted by the Master Teacher Pavilion. Goddess. Indeed. It belongs to Master K. There's no way to fake that. As elders of the Sanctum of Sages, they would never make a mistake with something as important as this. It's real. Roach was stunned for an instant before hurriedly snatching the token to take a look. The token was roughly the size of one's palm. The majestic insignia of the Master Teacher Pavilion was imprinted on the front, and on the back was a character written in seal script. It was difficult to determine what material it was made of, but just from the solemn and heavy air it exuded, it was apparent that the token was no weaker than any saint, high-tier artifact. Putting aside whether the token was real or not, just the very material and craftsmanship of the token made it a highly valuable commodity. And, not to mention, one could still vaguely feel the unique aura of the Master Teacher Pavilion within it. To think that the old master didn't give one to me. The more Roach stared at the token, the more indignant he felt. This is too much. Isn't the old master too biased? There was one thing that he dumped the young master on me to take care of, but he didn't leave anything for me either. This is unfair. As your student, I understand why you might want to cultivate independence in the young master and thus didn't want to interfere in his growth too much. But I'm your but. Not only did you not give me any money or bless, but you even gave someone else such a good token instead of me. We're both your butlers, but why does it seem like I'm your stepbutler instead? This won't do. The next time I meet the old master, I must talk sense into him. At the very least, I should receive at least one or two tokens from him. Hmm. Otherwise, how am I supposed to uphold my pride and dignity when everyone doubts my identity? As the butler of the man who stands at the top of the Master Teacher Pavilion headquarters, I need to at least maintain a front that's worthy of my stent, so that I don't bring shame to the old master's name. Seeing the look on Roach's face, Julian harumphed coldly. How easy. Can this talk improve my identity? Even though Roach felt deeply indignant inside, he still swiftly regained his poise and calmly replied, Well, since Henry and the others have already verified the token to be real, I guess you are indeed a butler of the old master as well. Considering how powerful an expert the old master was, it was understandable that he would have other butlers behind his back. As the main butler, he needed to be understanding and magnanimous to the old master's needs. 
Ever since I began the old master's subordinate, I have followed closely in his footsteps, never leaving his side. So tell me, why am I unaware of your existence? Julian flicked his token back into his storage ring before gazing at Roach coldly. Do you think that you're truly capable of following every single one of the old master's moves with your current capabilities? Roach sneered coldly before slowly raising his head to look into the distance, seemingly reminiscing the old days. The old master picked me out from the market, saying that he was in awe of my character and temperament. He tasked me with taking care of the young master and protecting him till he matures. It was then that I decided to serve as his butler for life. Ah. But those are matters from very long ago, so there's no point bringing them back up now. <laughs> uh, right. You mentioned earlier that you're the old master's butler. Since that's the case, you should just listen to my commands from now on. It's fine, you don't have to feel touched. Uh, it's my responsibility to share the burden of the old master in taking care of the other subordinates. Back when he was still in the Olmec Kingdom, Roach had been with the Old Master for quite some time, but he had never heard that the Old Master had another butler. Had he known this earlier, he wouldn't have tired himself out like this. He could simply have ordered this fellow around to get things done. After all, he was the butler whom the Old Master had entrusted the Young Master to, so it went without saying that his standing had to be higher. You want me? to listen to your commands. Hearing those words, Julian's cheeks twitched wildly and he nearly rushed forward to strangle the other party to death. Could you be any more shapeless? Julian thought. Even if I have concealed my cultivation, you should be able to tell how powerful I am from Master Henry and the others' attitude, right? I am a figure whom others would faint in the face. And yet, you dare to say such words to are you really that brave, or are your eyes that bad? Indeed, you're only a subordinate in charge of handling the Old Master's miscellaneous affairs, whereas I am a butler whom the Old Master has recognized and entrusted great responsibility to. Shouldn't it be your honor to listen to my command? Roach nodded matter-of-factly. After all, it was clear that the other party was a mere subordinate in charge of handling miscellaneous affairs. On the other hand, he was a butler who had been entrusted with a direct disciple. Given so, was it not obvious which of the two of them was of higher standing? A subordinate might still require a token for others to validate their identity, but as the real butler, it went without saying that he didn't need such a thing. With such a thought in mind, Roach suddenly felt his indignation subsiding significantly, and his pride swelled once more. You want me to listen to your commands? Julian clenched his teeth as a hint of killing intent flashed across his eyes. With a flick of his finger, he inconspicuously sent a surge of poison into the plump man's body as he thought callously. Sure, as long as you can survive this. After which, he decisively turned his gaze toward the elder, not wanting to waste any more of his breath on a dead man. Master Henry. I have accompanied the young master here this time. He has already successfully enrolled in the Sanctum of Sages, so my mission is already complete, and there's no reason for me to stay here anymore. The reason I am paying a visit right now is to request that you take good care of me. My master has very high expectations of the young master. But before Master Henry could respond, a loud voice suddenly interjected. There's no need for you to worry. I'll take care of the young master well. Julian's eyes widened in astonishment upon hearing that voice. He quickly turned his gaze over and saw Roach waving his hand calmly. How? Oh, how is this possible? Julian's heart jolted in shock. The poison he had used was so potent that even an expert of Master Henry's caliber would bleed from his seven apertures once afflicted with it. Considering the dose that he had injected into the plump man's body, how could he possibly remain completely fine and even speak so energetically? Was this for real? What do you mean by that? 
Not knowing the peril that he had just been through, Roach waved his hand derisively and harassed. If not for me taking care of the young master along the way, how could he have become a student of the Sanctum of Sages so easily? You needn't worry about anything. The young master is in good hands. Hearing how the plump man was speaking with increasing fervor, completely devoid of the weakened state that a poisoned man should be in, Julian narrowed his eyes grimly. Unable to believe what was happening before him, he discreetly flicked his finger a few more times, sending more surges of poison into the other party's body. Even though his temperament had calmed down over the years under Master K's teachings, the plump man before him had simply gone too far stomping right across his bottom line. As a Saint Level 9 expert, there was no way he could allow a weakling to humiliate him like that. In an instant, a few of the most lethal poisons that Julian had with him were injected right into Roach's body. Enough! Is there any point in you flicking your fingers again and again? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Or are you playing deaf with me? As a subordinate, you should know your place. It's no wonder the old master's unwilling to entrust greater responsibilities to you. Roach flung his sleeves in disapproval. He had been speaking nicely to the other party all this while, but that fellow just had to flick things at him again and again, provoking the gleam that the young master had left within his body to surge all around the place. Yo. <gasps> Seeing that there was no sign of the other party being poisoned, Julian's eyes nearly bulged out of their sockets. The poisons that he had flicked into the plump man's body earlier were the most potent that he possessed. Even Master K had struggled a bit to deal with them. And yet, the other party was completely fine before them. Could it be that the plump man was not as weak as he seemed? Was he a formidable expert in disguise? Just a while ago, he had met a woman who, despite her young age, was able to subdue him with ease. Furthermore, he had heard that the founder of the Poison Hall had recently returned, and she seemed to be a young woman too. All of this taught him to never judge a person by their appearance. Not to mention, his master's eye of discernment had always been exceptional. Most likely, there was a deeper reason why he chose this crude, plump man as his butler. After all, there was no reason for his master to recruit a useless man into his service. In an instant, the silhouette of the plump man he'd been looking down at all this while suddenly grew towering. Master Henry had noticed Julian's actions, but seeing that Roach remained completely unharmed, he thought that Julian had decided against it in the end. Heaving a sigh of relief, he hurriedly asked, I'll take good care of Master K's student as well. He's a freshman who cleared the examination just earlier this year, right? May I know his name? Xavier Cornelius. Roach and Julian spoke simultaneously. Xavier? Before Master Henry could respond, Julian had already turned to look at Roach with a deep frown. My master only has a single student, and his name is Cornelius. Who in the world is this Xavier, you speak? Up. All those who were close with Master K would know that he had only officially accepted a single student in his lifetime, and that person was Cornelius. That was the young master whom he had been speaking of, and he'd been following the other party all this while to protect him from the shadows, ensuring that he arrived at the Sanctum of Sages safely. As for that Xavier, he had never heard of this person before. It was one thing for him to have never heard of his master taking in another butler. But would it not be truly ridiculous if he remained oblivious to his master taking in another student as well? Roach waved his hand as he explained with a smile. Cornelius and our young master are from the same lineage, or they've already met with one another and they even had a friendly spar. And from the looks, it seems like he's already become our young master's junior. So, that fellow was in charge of taking care of Cornelius. That would explain everything. He had thought that it was weird when that fellow talked about how he had accompanied the young master here. 
it turned out that the young masters they were talking about were referring to different individuals. Based on what he knew of Xavier, the latter would surely have Cornelius pummeled till Cornelius willingly addressed him as senior. Junior! Julian froze on the spot. We could have been spared from all that trouble if you had just mentioned Cornelius's name earlier. I wouldn't have touted you if that was the case. But since we are all working for the old master, we should at least try to get along with one another. Seeing that Julian still had an uncomprehending frown on his forehead, Roach continued explaining with a smile. For an expert as powerful as the old master, it's perfectly normal for him to take in a couple of students and butlers outside without informing you. After all, as subordinates, it's not our place to inquire too much into our master's affairs. He knew full well how low profile the old master was. For one, despite knowing the old master for more than a year now, he still would have been oblivious to how incredible of a figure the old master was if not for Nathaniel's explanation a while ago. Julian was stifled into silence. With how confidently the plump man was speaking, and given that the other party had cleared Master Henry and the other's verification, and even his most potent of poisons couldn't kill the other party, he suddenly felt deeply uncertain. He might have been accompanying Master K for the past few years, but in the end, he was just a subordinate. There were still some matters that he wasn't privy to. Could it be that his master had taken in another student and butler behind his back? His initial intention had just been to request Master Henry to take care of Cornelius, but in a weird twist of fate, it somehow turned into a reunion event. 